what happens to somebody who's who's trying to you know do this for the first time and they've they've got referred to try you know put your food in here and then get this calorie counter here and you know or go check out this bmr thing online like the the best way to do this is for to carve out a week or two of you consistently eating x amount of calories and you can use these tools to give you a starting point Mm -hmm. on where maybe you're going to do this x amount of calories but you're really you're not don't hang on what they're telling you pay more attention to hey i've consistently eaten 2400 calories for this last week while i'm doing these consistent activities and pay attention to how you feel pay attention to what's going on with your weight are you dramatically dropping weight are you maintaining weight are you gaining weight and then adjust your calories based off of that and not what these tools are saying because that's right. where you, they're they're great for for feedback or a, another way for you to just like the scale same thing like this is where the scale can be amazing or can be a pain in the ass if you if you allow the scale like because our goal let's say was weight loss and then the next day you get on the scale and it went up one pound that doesn't necessarily mean you were doing anything wrong you could have easily took in a little extra sodium drank two glasses more of water and had 30 more carbs in that day and that could make the difference one pound on your scale up yet you're programming right. your diet and everything is perfect. So the same thing works with these tools is, you know, just because your, your your thing says that you burn 3,000 more calories than what you're eating, it doesn't necessarily need you the next day. You need to bump up a bunch of calories because you're way too low. Pay attention and see what how your body moves. Use these tools as just kind of feedback for you to kind of figure it out yourself. Hey, look, if you like what you just heard, later in the episode, we talk about ways to speed up your metabolism. By the way, Here's the giveaway for today's episode, MAPS Powerlift. So you can get free access to MAPS Powerlift. You just got to do the following and you have to win. Leave a comment below in the first 24 hours that we drop this episode. Subscribe to this channel, turn on notifications, do all those things. And if we like your comment, we'll notify you and you'll get free access to MAPS Powerlift. One more thing, we're running a sale this month. We have the starter bundle 50% off. That includes MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Prime, and the Intuitive Nutrition Guide. So that's a bundle that's going to be 50% off. We also have an advanced bodybuilder style maps program that's 50% off. Map split. So that's half off. Okay. So if you're interested in any one of those, head over to uh, mapsfitnessproducts.com and then use the code May Special for that 50% off discount. All right. Here comes the rest of the show. Listen, when it comes to resistance training, it's a skill. What does that mean? That means the most important factor with, with resistance training is form technique and control it's more important than all the other factors i feel like you're saying that just so you can make a case that you're athletic <laughs> <laughs> do, you no. feel, do you not feel that way it's, yeah you're saying i feel yeah. that way i feel like no, he's just no. trying to make a case that no he's you know why i'm saying too. this like, look guys because you know why i'm saying this because i look we all do this but i definitely would fell uh prey to this and i still can sometimes where you know there's lots of factors that make resistance training what it is Obviously, the, the form and technique, which is what makes the exercise the exercise. Gives it the value. Then there's the amount of weight that you lift. That's the one that sometimes I'll value above form and technique. It could be the intensity. It could be the pump, uh, the feel, all that other stuff. But the truth is, if an exercise could get a rating, um, it's the form and technique that gives it the highest rating. If the form and technique is off... The amount of weight that you lift and all the other stuff is way less impactful. Well, because you're building good habits with that. Uh, otherwise, um, if we were just focused on any of the other metrics that involves, you know, an exercise, we could get, we could move the weight in an undesirable way, which now we're going to start creating these problematic type patterns that yes, you could probably increase the amount of load, but like what, what position are you placing your body in and what are you actually training your body yeah. to do? Like, for example, does it count? to add weight to your bench press if you now are not going all the way down, right? right? Yeah, or, or if bouncing it off your chest or using it, momentum. Right? right, and those are those are more extreme examples, but we make these little adjustments to our technique and form. I know I do, just so I can add more weight to the bar. Um, and what you're doing is you're trading one for the other, and what you're trading is, you know, you're trading dimes for nickels. In other words, you're, you're trading in form and technique for something that's actually less valuable. Yeah. So, and the problem is with, with, this is all exercise, by the way. Okay. All exercise is a skill. In other words, running is a skill. Cycling is a skill. Resistance training is a skill. Yoga is a skill, right? If we, if we only think of it as a workout, like I'm here to get my shoulders tired or my legs tired or feel this on my biceps. And that's important. I'm not saying that's not important, 
But what happens sometimes is we ignore the skill aspect and we lose the value of the workout. So what that means is if you can go heavier, what you should ask yourself is, can I make this better form? Can I make the form better and technique better? Then it'll feel heavier just what by doing that. What percentage do you think of that is due to impatience? Oh, I think it's less that it's more ego. Yeah, I would mm. say it definitely oh, that, could be impatience, but uh, maybe ego. yeah, both. I guess so. Yeah. The intensity with split in half. intensity with impatience, where they're like, I'm just going to go harder. Yeah, right. Because I'm burning more calories. I could see or that. Or I just want to lose weight, or I just want to yeah. yeah, try and try and get up as much as possible. I mean, I'm sure there's there's always an exception to the rule. I think it's mostly ego. That's why I think men suffer from it more than women. I think women have their egos more in check when it comes to lifting. They're not they're they're not drawn to the I need to be the strongest chick in the gym. You heard it ever yeah. hear it. That's there's rare cases. There are some that say that. But for the most part, most women aren't caught up in that shit. It's normally a dude thing to be so concerned about what everybody else is mm -hmm. lifting compared to what they're lifting. Yeah. And so they're always looking to lift more weight. Yeah. It also is, you know, when we talk about the importance of getting stronger, which it is very important, it's a wonderful metric, especially in your first few years of exercise, we place such a heavy emphasis on that, that somebody might get the message that that's the most important. That's the only thing that they need to worry about. When in reality, it's that's if your form and technique are uh, is, are excellent. If your form of technique isn't excellent, perfect that. That'll make the exercise harder. It's going to increase the intensity, increase the tension. You don't need to add weight to the bar in order to to do that. So, and it's a, it's an important thing to communicate because we don't look at resistance training or the forms of exercise as skills. Whereas at sports, we do. Right? If you were learning how to pitch a fastball, you never threw a fastball before. The coach wouldn't just be like, throw harder, throw harder, throw harder, right? They'd right. be like, okay, hold on. Let me show you the technique. Let me make sure you're doing this right. Position right. your foot here. Here's how you move your hand. That's going to make you throw the ball faster, better than just throwing harder. Well, I used to work actually with, there was kind of a split in thought process with uh, certain coaches and trainers of one camp being that uh, we would like try to get into it as, as soon as possible and then kind of clean it up as you go in terms of like, I'm going to teach you the squat, but I'm not going to break it down to where you have to have like perfect form out of the gates. It's just like, we're going to work with kind of what you're starting with. And then we're going to clean it up and tweak things as mm -hmm. we go to get there versus the other coach that, you know, really outlines and defines like the mechanics of it and specific slows it down make sure everything's, you know, established a hundred percent. And then we start building on top of that. So I always, it was always an interesting conversation because like you could hear the argument, but I, I definitely leaned in one camp versus the other, which was, you know, kind of outlining it specifically first. Yeah. So that's how I, I was that way as a coach, but mainly not because I think I understood the science of it so much as I saw that as the, the only real opportunity I had as a young trainer to help people. Yes. I, I didn't have a lot of, I didn't have a wealth of knowledge, but I did understand like exercises, the proper mechanics yeah. of the exercise. And so it was a very easy way for me to be very meticulous about that. It's like, I can't talk very deep about nutrition. I don't know a lot about physiology yet. Like I didn't understand a lot of stuff but at that you know point, form. but I knew forms. Yes. And so I became very meticulous about that to, to show there's my value. Right. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I would like really, really critique clients. And I really trained myself that way too. I wanted to be perfect. I wanted to, every movement that I taught and I would stay away from, to be honest with you, I stayed away from a lot of Olympic movements because of that. Oh yeah. Because I didn't have good technique. I never had a coach. So I completely avoided lifting them. I also did that with a lot of stuff like squatting and deadlifting. The reason why I didn't teach my clients early on in my career, a lot of squatting and deadlifting was because I didn't have great technique. Yeah. I avoided doing it because I didn't have great mechanics. I knew I probably wouldn't be the greatest of coaches that way. So I stayed in kind of my wheelhouse. And that was the way I kind of built value as a coach early on was just being super meticulous about yeah. the movement. Well, what makes an exercise effective and safe versus what makes an exercise not effective and dangerous? It's the form and technique. Mm -hmm. It's your ability to control it and it's your biomechanics. You can take a squat and, and it, it, it's not dangerous because your technique and your form are excellent. Even at high intensities, your form and technique are so good that the risk factor for injury is really low. Well, you you go 50% worse with your technique. Now you're doing a dangerous, not as effective exercise. So when you look at the exercises, they're not interchangeable. It's not like, oh, this is all quad exercises. These are all hamstring. So I just got to get the quad sore, get the hamstring sore, get the glute sore. No, no, no. The value of the exercises is in the exercise itself, the technique and the form. So perfect that. And the beauty of this is it'll give you, it'll pay you back dividends forever. It's something that will always pay dividends. 
You just try to keep lifting weight heavier and heavier weight for the rest of your lifting career. Watch what happens. Yeah. I know this is you know I've, I've hit that wall many times. So well, it lays such a solid foundation that you know if you if you stay there first for an extended period of time until you can really perfect form, then it allows you to flirt with the kind of the boundaries a little bit because yes. you know what home based looks and feels like. Whereas if you just kind of haphazardly build upon it or go like the one method you were saying, Justin, where like, oh, just we'll work with your your form and technique and we'll slowly coach along the way. Well, that person never feels what a solid foundation feels like. So what? It, how far off are you on that squat? Yeah. Or how far off am I on that Dude, deadlift? It's like you're molding jello yeah, at that point. Yeah. Yes. Ask, uh, God, I forgot who said this. It might have been Bruce Lee, so correct me if I'm wrong or you know, sir, someone watching will. But he said it was easier to, to teach a person who didn't know how to kick a proper kick versus teach someone who learned how to kick wrong yes. for years to teach them how to kick properly because oh, yeah. it's so, so if you take somebody and you just don't worry too much about, wired. yes, you take someone and you have them squat and deadlift and exercise, you know, with poor technique and think, oh, I'm going to clean it up later. It's probably going to be harder to backtrack than it would be just to start from the beginning. Well, this is why if you ever talk yeah. to like a golf pro, they highly recommend if you're going to get into the sport of golfing at all to go have a professional actually- Right out the gates. Right out the gates. Yeah. Because if you learn how to golf for a couple of years and just, which is one of the more technical sports when you talk about movements and mechanics- yeah. And you build this swing where you figure you just kind of figure it out on your own, and then you get good enough to get the ball down, get the ball down the course, and then you decide, oh, let me go see a pro and teach you, and he has to like completely tear apart your swing because it was so bad. Oh, yeah. I went through this with just because I hit a wall in terms of playing guitar. Like I got only so good on my own because I taught myself from learning piano. So I learned piano and it was actually structured all the, you know, intricate details of like how to hold my hands, like the whole deal in terms of like being able to learn chords and whatnot. And, uh, so then I decided to just teach myself guitar and then try and then later on, because I hit a wall and I wanted to learn new skills is like every teacher that's tried to help me has had such a hard time. It was like, <laughs> dude, I, okay. So just try this. And like, I know you're going to do your own thing, but like, I want you to do it this way. And it's like, <laughs> So I'm actually thinking, I was talking about this with, with my youngest, like he was flirting with the idea of like learning drums. And I'm like, I think I just need to start from scratch a new instrument and start all over, learn every little detail of like how to hold it properly, how to do things like, and be meticulous about it. So I could actually build on that. I think I like totally like capped myself. Oh, yeah. Well, that, that's what it is. I think that's a great way to, th to think about it too. I think the same ways with lifting, I think it, you both can see progress. Even the person that has kind of wavy, sloppy form, and in the beginning, right? Yeah, at the beginning, and get and, and get away with it. But you're going to reach your ceiling much faster that way. And you may, you actually may even see gains a little bit quicker because you just keep adding weight, mm -hmm. even though it's kind of sloppy. Versus the person who takes uh, a little bit more time laying a good, solid foundation, that person's ceiling is going to be much, totally. much higher. Very, very good point. All right, so Adam. Tell me about your weekend. I've been <laughs> yeah. very worried about you. I've been checking in with Katrina He's all weekend. You guys had. Something uh, you guys dude, had something bad. No, the whole family. I feel so. I feel so bad for my wife, dude. She. Uh, so we all three got the flu. Uh, obviously, probably stomach from, flu. Yeah. Okay. So, and I didn't think I. I wasn't sure what I had. I drove to work that day. I came to. I came Thank in. God, I made you leave. <laughs> yeah, I, I looked at you. Took one sounds, look at him, dude. Sounds, sounds so paranoid. <laughs> no, I, well, I got a pregnant wife. This at is home. where it sounds paranoia. Actually, like, yeah. If, I well, took one look at like, you, and I was. You know what's cool, good, bro? It was kind of funny. Was I was really annoyed. I was just like. Fuck so I drove all the way over here. Yeah. I'm you just see here. my dedication. I'm like talk. I'm like fucking talking <laughs> shit. Like as I'm driving home, and I'm like, oh, 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 shit! I gotta pull over. Yeah. <laughs> I had to pull over, over pull over the side of the freeway, bro. Puked. I pulled over the on side. On the freeway. Of, that's how bad it was. It was like I, because I was in denial. I was just like, oh, I, this doesn't feel right. I'll wait. I'll wait till I get home, and then I'm like. <laughs> I don't think I'm going to make it home, dude. <laughs> no. I had to pull on the side of the freeway. And just fry the weed. Guts out? Yeah, freaking on the side of the freeway, just throwing up, man. I was like, oh, shit. Okay, yeah. maybe, I, maybe, I'm, maybe I am a little sick. Yeah. So, yeah, I went home, and then uh, and Max and Katrina, same thing. They were already feeling it. So, we actually, I slept in a separate room that night because Max is all, was already starting to feel kind of off, and, he, and when he comes in her bed, a lot of times in our bed, I won't be able to sleep, so I'll, I'll head to the other room. So we already slept separate. I was up early to work and felt off. And I told you guys. Yeah, you like, weren't 100% sure. Yeah, I'm like, I, I don't feel right. I feel kind of off. I might be coming down with something. I don't know, whatever. And then you sent me home. And then that happened. And then I called Katrina. She's like, oh, my God. She goes, I was literally like laying on the floor and had to I called Jerry to come 
help me with Max because I didn't know what I was going to do because he's not feeling well. I couldn't take care of myself. I was like, oh, my God, are you serious? Well, I'm on my way. So we get home. We were all sick. Um, luckily, Katrina has the, like the strongest immune system of all of us. She was better within like 24 hours. Next day, she was already starting to feel better. By day two, she was feeling great. Um, but Max and I still carried it through the entire week. But I tell you what, though, um, the complete transparency to the audience that I, what I what I didn't realize and it didn't hit me till about day three was, man, this thing, the fevers were still coming. I had the chills. I was just these migraines that were so bad. And what I didn't realize, because I was just thinking about the flu and, you know, getting better from throwing up. I, at that point, I'm only <clears throat> I think I've had like half a bowl of soup and water is like mm. all I'm intaking. But I had just recently, like maybe like three weeks ago, said something to Katrina. I was like, you know, I've, I, I openly on the show, I talk about anytime I take anything consistently, I monitor myself and I and I try and go, okay, I've been taking that long enough or I've moved up because of the dependency like with caffeine or anything. And I just told her, I said, you know, <clears throat> I've been taking these Kratom pills pretty consistently for a while. I need to come, I need to come down from them. I told her that. And then I had told her, you know, I've been, I've been really pushing the, the, uh, the caffeine lately. I said, I'm, I'm up to my, my, what I would consider my max, my max for me. So my, what I call my, my top threshold where I always try and pull back is when I get to, uh, I always will allow myself to have a cup of coffee in the morning. I love that. And then another cup or an energy drink. That's kind of like my my ceiling. Mm -hmm. And when I start to go beyond that, I go, okay, it's time to go back. Well, I was at a cup of coffee and two energy drinks. Mm -hmm. So what is that, like 700, 800? Yeah, something like that. Yeah, 700-ish yeah. milligrams of, of caffeine. Flying a little. Yeah, you will be, yeah for a little Justin, it's not me. Justin's like, that's my morning. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that, and that's normally time. where I, I allow myself to get there, but that's normally my reminder to myself, hey, it's time to come back yeah. down. So I literally had just told Katrina this, that like I knew that I was kind of at my peak or whatever, and I need to come back down. It didn't even dawn on me because all I was thinking about was being nauseous and not. So you're not drinking or taking anything. Yeah. So I'm not doing caffeine. I'm not doing kratom. I'm not doing anything. Ooh. And day like three, it like I think it hits me that I'm like, well, caffeine like withdrawal sucks. At the same time, and, oh, yeah. and kratom yeah. withdrawal can be nasty too. Ever. Yes. So you had both, <laughs> and you were you just the getting over that and oh, the vomits. No. Bro. <laughs> it was a fucking time. shit. Story. Now, how did you piece it together? Because you you probably think I don't know about you, but I'd be like, oh, it's the flu. I still have it. So the reason why I thought it was something else was because I saw how Katrina got better. And I also noticed like my, my stool was normal. My stool was normal and I wasn't throwing up anymore. So no more flu symptoms. Yeah. No, no more of that. Except for the shitty, yeah, the shitty feelings. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Feeling like shit that felt that that was what, but then I, I realized like, okay, I haven't had any caffeine. I hadn't had any Kratom and I went, Oh wow. I was like, and I had known that I just, I had just expressed that. So it was, it wasn't like I was oblivious to where yeah. I was at. I knew that I was at a high intake. So that's what really when it what, dawned were your, what were your symptoms at this point? Uh, I had I kept the the fever kept coming back right. So I, I even after I had thought I had recovered from the flu, I'd get like these little mini fever spikes where I'd spike back up to like a hundred, even a hundred and one, uh, <clears throat> a couple times. The night sweats, chills. I, I, I could never get the temperature right. I'd either be too hot, I'd be too cold. Wow. Yeah, I was. I, I would think I was freezing, so I'd get all in sweats and a beanie and, and covered up, the heater on in the house, and then three hours later, I'd be drenched in sweat, have to peel it all down. And that's those are symptoms of uh, like opiate type, because Kratom acts on the opiate receptor. Yeah, even right? though so. it's not considered an opiate and it comes from a natural leaf, this is the, this is the one crack on it. This is also why, by the way, like we'd been approached before about advertising. We talked a long time ago, like years ago, uh, when we first heard about Kratom. And I, I really think it's a, gr I think it's a, a great resource for somebody who has somebody in their family. I've, I've, I've actually turned several people that I know that were addicted to opiates, um, onto it as mm -hmm. a way to come off of it, but it has addictive properties just like it. Mm -hmm. And so, and like that or caffeine, you could take it a few times and go like, oh, wow, that feels really nice. It's kind of mellows me out or relax me. It can even be pain relief a little bit. And that can start as like, oh, okay, I'll have a few of these. And then it becomes like, oh, I'll have these every day for a little while. And oh, I'll just do that for like a week. And then a week turns in mm -hmm. just like anything else. And then the dose has to go Yeah, up. and then like the anything. dose. Yeah. So and I'm aware of that. Just uh, And I, I'm okay with it as long as I do what I always do, which is, oh, it's been a couple of months. I've been doing this consistently. It's time for me to come back the other way, just like I do with marijuana, caffeine, anything yeah. else. So it was just bad timing for me. It was literally like right when I knew that I should have been coming the other way. 
and it didn't really kind of dawn on me until I was like, man, I should be feeling yeah. better. Yeah, you and I have that in common. I do the same thing. I go, I go, I push something, push something, and then thank God, you know, we both, you're the same way. We have the self awareness to be like, all right, I'm gonna pull back, but then you got to go through like a. a two days or a week of feeling like garbage yeah, grueling kind of detox. Probably. Yeah. So, I mean, I mean, I, you know, I talked to Jessica about that for me too. And I'm like, I got to figure out how to deal with bad feelings. That's for me, at least I'm not talking about anybody. It's for me personally, how to deal with bad feelings. Cause I find myself, I want to run away from a bad feeling. So I'll take something or do something to make myself feel better. But then that becomes an impulse. Mm. And then that becomes a habit. And then you get to the point where you actually start getting diminishing returns, like the caffeine, right? You take some, feels good, take more, take more. Next thing you know, I'm doing these crashes with energy and I'm like, what the, and I'm like, oh, I got to back off. Well, here we go. I'm going to have three days of whatever, but you were, it's, you know, I'm glad, I'm glad that, that you yeah. figured that out. Cause that's, yeah. <laughs> that's scary. Like yeah. what's wrong with me? You know? Yeah, no, that many, that <laughs> many days on. that, I mean, dude, I seriously, I felt like, I felt like I was going to die. <laughs> You're <laughs> feeling it right now though. You look yeah, like no, I feel great today. You know, it's like, I mean, what is that? How many days now? Today was a uh, started Thursday. Yeah. Yeah. We're so, going out Friday. So. You're yeah, out yeah. now. So yeah, 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 man. Well, welcome back, bro. It's yeah, good yeah. to have you back. Uh, Justin, yeah. you had a good weekend too. I had a Whirlwind of a weekend. Yeah. I love your text. I don't hope if you don't mind me sharing it. I, like, yeah, yeah, just, yeah, insult ahead. all the people in Utah. Or just, <laughs> no, I'm not going to say all of it. But he, <laughs> you, you, well, this was the end of the trip. Just I, there was a, there's a shit sandwich here. So okay, go, yeah, go ahead. He, he yeah. was in Salt Lake City for uh, gymnastics. Anyway, we get a text right, and he's up there with, for his gymnastics tournament, and he's like, "I'm, in I'm finally." He's like, "Damn!" He's like, "I'm finally ready to relax. It's been a long weekend." They don't sell alcohol on Sundays up here. What the hell? Yeah, dude, nothing <laughs> right. was open at all. <laughs> yeah. Like, so I guess we'll start with the bad, right? So, <laughs> yeah, I was like Sunday realizing that I guess like they have curfew or something because it's like close to the temple there and yeah. like downtown. Uh, literally every store was closed. Our whole plan for the day was like, first of all, we had to sit through, I don't know, maybe five hours straight of just like, you know, kids competing. And the day before we were there for like just the morning and then we had the afternoon off and we got to do some fun stuff with the natural mm -hmm. history museum, you know, had a good time with the kids and all that. But it was like the Sunday we're like, okay, so I guess we're here. We're going to watch them compete in their last events. And you didn't know when they were going to go. Their flight group was this time, whatever. So you just have to wait. You just got to wait. And like, oh, you're geez. just sitting there just like, I have, you know, when you get to that point where you're sitting there and I'm like, I should be having like, you know, intimate conversations with my wife. We should be like, you know, enjoying our time together. We were just like, both looked like, like the, the life force was just sucked out of us. <laughs> just, uh, uh, <laughs> like the same music on repeat, you know, these like fluorescent lights, like cement floors, like we're sitting, we, when they're done, when they actually compete, now they have to go get their little metal. And that takes about another two hours before like they finally get to their group. I mean, so know? is there a part of you that kind of wishes that your kid doesn't play? So you get the fuck out of there. <laughs> <laughs> we were like this because like, if they qualify, they, they were going to be like in nationals, which means that, that we have to go to like Phoenix after this. This was like the last one in the season. Oh my God. And so we've been going like consistently on these dad trips. against you and your sport. I know. Isn't that... <laughs> I wonder if my dad did that, you know, like with, with my sport, I never even thought of that, like, but I definitely had those feelings. Yeah. Well, at like, least with football though, the game and you're done. These yeah, there's something consistently going on. This reminds me of, of uh, judo and jujitsu tournaments because yeah. you go and you're there yeah, all, cause yeah. you got to wait for your turn. If you don't show up on the mat when they call and your you name. You can't go get qualified. food because it's like, you don't know, you're going to miss a window. Yes. And so, you know, you're, we're just... So and nothing was open to eat and and I'm just like salt lake you know like what the fuck like just like going crazy and then that's all finally done so we go to we our whole plan was to go shopping in this one place that like I got all these suggestions for things to do in Salt Lake which was great but like proximity we didn't have a car so we had to like walk and then it was raining all of a sudden it started raining and then there, it's just riddled with homeless people like oh, I, I don't know, know if this is a new thing if that nobody was like like oh yeah they're there yeah not only are they there but you know there's like a, a mentally deranged person in the middle of the street ah, like running like throwing things there's a guy fighting some other guy across the street there's a guy literally like smoking heroin <laughs> as we walked by I was like wow oh, this my is God. crazy I didn't know that I was like holding my kids close you know and then good it's thing Salt Lake huh hey, good, yeah, thing dude. That, good thing the liquor stores are closed <laughs> yeah <laughs> right already straight so yeah, but uh, so, so the only thing that was open was Starbucks, and we're like, okay, we're, we're we're catching a second wind in there, getting warm, you know, and and 
anyway, we're trying to like find any store open, nothing. And then finally later on in the day, we found out like another part, like, I don't know, like probably 15 minutes away was open. It was like a Dave and Buster's and some other thing. And so, you know, and this is Courtney's personal hell because she just doesn't like being in like groups of people in like video game. And so I'm sitting there, like I'm geeking out with the kids. I'm like, finally, you know, something I can do. And she's just like, <laughs> you know, just drained of all life. And then we had to wait because we had a flight at like 10 50 at night to get back oh. here. And I didn't even go to bed to like one 30 tonight. Sucks. And that airport's a beast. Yeah. yeah. It's, it takes forever to walk, uh, to your gate. And so anyway, it was, <laughs> it was, ch- I was like, what am I supposed to learn here? God, like what, <laughs> like, what are you teaching me? He's showing you that you're a good dad, bro. How's your, how did your kids like it? So it was, yeah. So all that aside, like, um, uh, they all loved it. Everett actually crushed, dude. I'm so proud of him. He did. He got first in in his uh, what? age group. Yes, uh, for like two of the events, and then you know second in another one of them. I felt so bad though because like the first day you were supposed to stay uh, because they get like an initial award, and then you have to come back for like the ceremony where they get the actual like medal. And Courtney and I didn't know that, and like so it was like three hours later. It was like. 10 o'clock at night where they were handing him out and like our, his coach calls like, Hey, so where's Everett? He's supposed to get this. And I'm like, Oh shit. So he, he didn't get his medal because of hard delinquency. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to haunt me, dude. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> it's like, just scratch that one off. Uh, so I felt a little bit one, bad bro. about that. You gotta make him one. <laughs> <laughs> You gotta well, buy him something now. Yeah. yeah. Well, uh, so we, I actually the next day we we met up. There's this guy there uh, representing um, aerial skiing, and he like had a gold medal, and so he let like Everett wear it, and it was like a real legit gold medal. Wow. I took a picture, but what was cool about it was they are recruiting um, these kids because it translates super well to like aerial freestyle. Yeah. Uh, and I was like whoa dude that's super cool like I, I didn't like think that was an option so i'm like i was talking with him about getting them in a camp and 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 throwing them in the mix yeah. see, that's why gymnastic is such an awesome base there's oh like a God. lot of di- different directions you oh, can go bro yeah, yeah. It's, it, body awareness tell me one sport where you where body awareness isn't going to make you a yeah. way better athlete yeah it was I especially was with all the extreme stoked. sports yeah all of them dude not just air i mean you yeah. the skate even skateboarding bro. snowboarding bro, when wakeboard, I, all of them when i did exactly when i wish i, I would have done it when i was when i wrestled or did jujitsu people with gymnastics backgrounds who were beginners already Always. were badasses yeah compared to other beginners because they just knew how to move their body and they learned techniques so well it, it reminds me of the the, the 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 discrepancy between a client who had like a a sports background versus someone who had none whatsoever you remember oh, when those? you train them yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, you you teach somebody who has had an athletic background their whole life, and they could have never touched a weight before, but had an athletic background their whole life. Yeah, they at least know their I body. Can cue, I can cue that client l- l- sometimes without even touching them and yeah. get them to get into great form. You take a client who's never lifted weights. Or you have to put them in position. Oh, my God, dude. Like a, like a piece uh, of you got to repeat yourself 15 times yeah. and use all kinds of trainer tricks to get them to hold their body because their body awareness just... Yeah. It's not like if you don't if you don't train that like you yeah. <laughs> you don't have it, no. man. It's crazy no, when you you're, see someone like that. You're a good dad, Justin. That's great. I'm sure your kids will I remember mean, this. And I'm wearing the gymnastic dad shirts. Like I, I'm supporting <laughs> them, but I, it was rough. Dude. Yeah, that day was rough. For well, me you know too. what you brought up. It's like so. I've been to a jujitsu tournament before and wrestling tournament before. Where I think that would be different and hard to watch is there's so many different things going right. Like it's not just like if you're watching jujitsu. Everybody's doing jujitsu, so yeah. I'm. Oh, if I'm, I hear what you're saying. So if I'm watching as, different events, so yeah, I'm yeah. into it. Like, because I'm seeing another guy's technique. Like, yeah. oh, bro, did you yeah. see that move or like that? Whereas if I'm like, let's say I don't know what your kid does, but it, let's say he's into the horse or whatever, whatever gymnastic. There's so there's, many. They're things only aerial, so you do like a double. Mid, it's like all basically like trampoline based things where they jump, flip, and, oh. and oh. so yeah, they run and they do, or they'll do tumbling like back spring stuff yeah. where they like. Well, it just it's, yeah, but, yeah. no matter what, you're there to see your kid. Yeah, yeah. But what happens is you're there for 10 hours watching everybody else's kids right but, but i think part, part of why i imagine you're there for the 10 hours there though is because they have different events right so it's like yeah the, well and, and, and here, this was the biggest sort of the, the west coast so like every state was represented like wow. from the west coast so you had like bro for everywhere from like place, wyoming that's a big deal yeah I know, yeah man it'd be cool if you had bro, his trophy. kids have no idea this, this. <laughs> <laughs> he's gonna see this podcast one day dude yeah. i'm gonna have to come hey, <laughs> hey we didn't <laughs> tell him dude hey, he's like don't tell him he's gonna tell don't tell him we got a medal. He's gonna tell his friends, be like, "Hey, I got." Fr-. He's gonna be like, "I got first place." And be like, "Oh yeah, let me see the medal." <laughs> what do you mean? 
Uh, what metal? What do you mean? You said I'm a good dad. I don't know, dude. Uh, I don't know. That's, hey, what I would do is I would uh, go buy one and get one made, dude. Yeah. And just be like, oh, they forgot to give you this yeah. thing. Yeah. You know what I'm Look, Everett. Yeah, yeah he ain't going to know the difference with that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I was just thinking of making one out of like yeah. aluminum foil. Yeah, or something. one of Adam's physique <laughs> trophies. <laughs> yeah. Are you sure, dad? Yeah, you can have one, bro. Yeah, dude. Yeah. This yeah. is weird. Yeah. Yeah. Yo, gymnasts are buffed. Here you go. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> this is your award. Yeah. Anyway, it's so good. Uh, well, we have, uh, uh, I want to bring something up. We got Mother's Day coming up. Up, and this is going to be perfect, just a perfect conversation. I want to get to Mother's Day in a second, but Jordan Peterson did a post that caused some controversy in my family. So I want to read this. Whoa, in your family? Yeah, well, we were kind of going back and forth about what he meant and if he meant to be offensive or what he meant by it or whatever. So check this out. And, you know, I'm a fan of Jordan Peterson. I think he communicates certain things in very brilliant ways. So he did this post and it says, this is the first, the first part. It says, women have been making men self-conscious since the beginning of time. And then he says, they do this primarily by rejecting them, but they also do it by shaming them if men do not take responsibility. Since women bear the primary burden of reproduction, it's no wonder. It's very hard to see how it could be otherwise. But the capacity of women to shame men and render them self-conscious is still a primal force of nature. Hmm. So the what went back and forth was my aunt posted it and she goes, oh, this kind of makes me feel bad. And I and then Jessica said, I don't like the way he worded that because I think he used the word shame because he said he's shaming or women shame men. Hmm. Now, the way I understood it, and I'd love your guys' opinions on this, is, and I, this is what I said to my, because I'm in this big family thread with all my aunts, my mom, and you know, Jessica's in there and my, my cousin's wife. So it's, a, it's just a bunch of us. And I said, you know, I said, women turn boys into men. And, and, and my aunt's like, what do you mean by that? I said, well, for men or for boys, I should say, we don't really have lots of pressures to take responsibility. We can have kids up until we're old. We actually become more attractive as we get older and make more money. So we don't have that pressure either. We buy things. We can, we can be very frivolous and not worry about stuff. But then you meet a woman, you fall in love with her and she puts the responsibility on you. Like, look, you got to marry me. Like you got to make this choice. And then, Hey, we need to have kids. And a boy has to stand up or step up and take the responsibility of, okay, I got to save money. I got to buy a house. I got to support you. I got to, we're going to have kids. Now I can't go out with my buddies every night. I can't do this kind of stuff. So that's what I think. He I, meant I think that. he not only meant that, but he meant that it's a very primal and instinctual thing too. Not yeah. that it's a conscious thing that women are trying. So I don't think it was coming off as like women are trying to shame men. Yeah. I think his point is that it's a very primal and instinctual thing yep. for them yeah. to do that. Agreed. And for us to to uh, breed and to evolve, that's got to happen. Agreed, so 100%. That's how I would take that. Yeah, 100%. I mean, yeah, yeah. I think that, um, you know, much of society has been shaped on men trying to uh, gain the approval of, of the opposite sex. And so it's like, it puts a lot of weight in terms of like, whether and they'll let you know whether or not you're you're on the right uh, direction or not, mm -hmm. and so like in terms of shame, maybe you call it whatever you want, but it's definitely going to be a, a harsh criticism of like, no, I'm not into that, you know, or I'm into this, and then like men are definitely molded in terms of their decision because of that. Well, Absolutely, I, I think it caught controversy because especially in today's time, like nobody, nobody, uh, especially no woman wants to hear a man tell them what they do. Yeah. And that's what it, it, and it's him saying that women shame men. Yeah. It's like, and obviously Dude, that's we sound, shame each other too. It's like, it's, it, it, that's it also doesn't need to be a negative thing. Yeah. It's not the, a negative that's, thing. So that's how, the, uh, so I it's think really that, I think automatically there's people who are going to be defensive because like, who are you? You're a yeah. man telling me, a woman, that I, how I act or how I treat men. No, you don't know any better. When I don't think his point is coming from a place of this is a bad thing. Listen, it's a natural, it's a thing of nature. Who's going to tell you you're full shit? <laughs> and, and that needs to happen. And, and tell you to take hard responsibility. Look, if you look at the you look at the numbers, the statistics, okay? Men, when they don't pair up and have a family, or especially pair up, we become more violent. We're more likely to use substances. We're more likely to just to worship money and you know these kind of worldly things. When when men meet a woman that says, "Hey, like I know you," and you you fall in love, it's very. I mean, it's a very powerful thing, right? Uh, I mean, I, I experienced it with Jessica. It's a very very overwhelming powerful thing, and the woman says, you, uh, "You look, I, you know, I know we're together, but this is what I want out of you, and I want you to marry me, or I want you to take responsibility, or I don't want you to go act like a kid all the time. You know, maybe you need to start yeah. having some drive with certain things or whatever, and then you have kids, right? And it's like, well, you got to be 
a good dad. And it does. It, it women turn man it turn boys into men. Without them, think about it. What you get this Peter Pan syndrome. You do. You see, of like, course. Think about it. And you know what's I was just talking to, to Vicky earlier. She's the she's the one that does her awesome hair, by the way. Good job. We didn't yeah, have look her for at this a week. Cut, dude. It was fresh. I was looking like a like a caveman for a second. <laughs> but I was talking to her about this, and it's like, you know, media makes it they glamorizes boys. Like the dude who never grows up and yeah. has all the money and all the chicks and all this and that and does oh, whatever yeah. he wants. And it's funny because that's, it, you know, I, I understand why they glamorize it because they could sell that, right? That's an easy way to sell products and shit. Because when you're a really responsible father and husband, you're less likely to go buy a bunch of stuff and seek all this stuff out. So I get it. But y y you got to grow up. And growing up means you take responsibility. It means you're taking care of other people. You're stable. You decide to be I also there think for that, that that we're just growing up at a time that's counterculture too. That's right. Our totally. our, our generation, uh, Peter Pan syndrome is counterculture to the family man who, yeah. who were you know what I'm saying like so I think part of it I mean, I do agree that some of it's uh, monetarily driven, right? Yeah, yeah, like yeah. but I also think that it's just it's just natural. So which I I that's just kind of how I believe we always work. We have this kind of pendulum swinging type of yeah. you know, society where and we're always on on one side or the other. We're always wanting we all for the most part want to be somewhere in the middle yep. and we we tend to swing and i think yep. the the glorifying the peter pan syndrome type of guy yep. has swung really hard for the last decade or so and i'd like to think being a man a father like a, you know i think family i think that i hope is on its way back i right? hope so definitely i, and, I, and, I, I want to believe so and, I, and of course men have our value i'm not here to tell you you know what our value is because we're focusing on this for a second but um, I mean, it's it's true what I'm saying. Look, uh, here's a statistic right here that'll prove it. We talk about taking response. What's one of the ultimate responsibilities to take care of your your kid? That's hard. Hard work. Yeah. It's expensive. You can't do all the you know the the fun easy stuff. Sometimes it sucks and whatever. Who is far more likely to to abandon their kid? Men are right. Women take responsibility and they'll force men to do so. It's a very good thing. Now, men have our own value, but I'll leave that up to the women to talk about. But you, speaking of which, Mother's Day is coming up. Uh, so, you know, I'm saying this basically to show my appreciation yeah. for the moms and, and wives and stuff out there. Cause, uh, you know, yeah, they, they, without you, we'd all probably die. Yeah. <laughs> we'd, all, <laughs> we'd all be, we'd all be eating, working out. I mean, and, I'd do some crazy stuff do, who, no kid, <laughs> or sure. nothing, right. Or nothing. Hey, right? You, yeah. you mentioned statistics. I have to bring this up because somebody's, uh, sent this in my DMS that <clears throat> remember the episode where I don't remember how far back this was, but it wasn't that long ago where you guys were teasing me about, not wanting to be uh, buried, and then I said I wanted to be cremated. Yes. So it's, he sent me this uh, article that I was super fascinated. I was like, holy shit, I would never have guessed this. Okay, so I'm, so I'm going to give you some statistics here. In uh, just the year 2000, uh, the percentage of Americans that were crema cremated, take a guess. Do you have any idea? Mm, I'll say 10%. Ten, oh, you stole mine, dude. But, what are you like, press it right? Yeah. 11%. 11%, <laughs> 11 dude. I'll one uh, up them. 26%. Oh, uh, you're closer okay. to yeah. yeah. In year 2000, okay? 2020, okay? This is 20 years later. What do you What do you think the percentage is at? It went up. What do you think? Oh, man. I don't know. 30%. 50 56%. Wow. It is projected. It is everybody? the prediction Killing. is by 2040 that 80% of people will choose to be cremated. Wow. Uh, Isn't that wild? Why? Set us on fire. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe they all have huh. the same kind of feelings I had. Yeah, well, <laughs> <laughs> Maybe no, there's you know, too we, many people buried. We already made it. We already made an agreement. Anyway, we're not going to cremate. If you die before us, you're shooting do, flaming arrows at me. I know. No, we're going to do what that one rapper did. We're going to yeah. embalm your body, <laughs> stand I'm you up. I'm just worried, like technology now and CRISPR and everything, they can just like clone us. You know, like I just bear, like burn me, so you don't have any more of me left. Save your DNA. And yeah. So you were you were on board with me with the cremation thing? Yeah, I've always said just burn me, dude. You, you want to be cremated throw too? Throw me. Oh. Yeah. You really? are you and Doug the only bury guys or something? I mean, I personally don't care. You're old I'm school. Dead. Yeah. You're kind of like dead. whatever. You like flip a coin. <laughs> yeah, I don't. <laughs> I don't care. I want to tug wheels. Just like, have your way with I don't my need dead some body, big yeah. mausoleum yeah. or anything like that. I mean, it's <laughs> yeah. like okay, who's going to come? See, to now if I were to get buried, that's how I would want to get buried. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I know. You'd, yeah. I don't want to be like a resurrected <laughs> bury me. zombie. I want to like a statue, a mansion, a pyramid. Yeah, of gold. I don't want to be like shoulder to shoulder with another dead guy. You know what I'm saying? Like, I want to have some space. Just people coming by, caroling, constantly. No, I'm going to have my body. I'm going to have. But isn't that a crazy number? That's crazy. That's super high. I right? told Jessica I want my body turned into protein powder, and then she has to take it oh, until she runs out. Oh, that's that's nasty. Nasty. You know that? Sally, you, did you kidding. see? Yeah. I just saw an interview. Good that, amino acid profile. Yeah. You just reminded me of something. I just saw an interview with uh, Megan Fox and talking about her and Machine Gun Kelly. 
Yeah, the the new weirdos. Uh, yeah, drink, drink each other's drink, blood. Drinking each other's like blood. Billy Bob Thornton and Angelina Jolie, right? Listen, they, they were the they drink each other's blood. Y- y- listen, they're weird, but also, why are you telling everybody? Like, is it? Be- I feel what's, like they have to tell everybody. We're more interesting what? than you. Yeah, who cares? Yeah. That's what. Okay, you drink each other's blood. Huh. All right, cool. You got a weird <laughs> thumb, making. Fe- making That's fun. what. <laughs> it's weird to me that we live. <laughs> we live in a time that you would do something like that. You would want to share it, and it'd be like this positive thing, and other people talk about it. Like that's just weird to me. Like if you're gonna do some bro. weird shit behind the closed doors with you and your wife, then by all means, was she talking wife. about the actual ritual thing? That yeah, she she said that. It? She just said, "Oh, it's like a ritual thing that they do," and she's talking about how she's like, uh, like she. I think she was saying how she likes to like prick her her thumb and then drop the blood, and she or he's Pure more honey, like, like mm. he just wants to like. Argh. Cut me and suck them off my chest or whatever. What the f- hell? Yes, yes, dude. See, I wonder why people think Hollywood is run by sat- satanic cults. You know, <laughs> yeah. man, where do they get that idea yeah. from? Weird. It's pretty so far fetched. By the way, I had to mention, I forgot to mention this for Mother's Day. Uh, from you flowers, uh, dot com. Let's see, from you flowers dot com forward slash flower forward slash mind pump. If you use the code MP20, you get 20% off. Forgot to mention that. So we have some. They're on our, our mind pump partners page, too. Oh, okay, perfect. So just so, so. you know, I mean, yeah, we, they've been up on our mind pump partners We're page. We're going to take a sponsor break right now. <laughs> <Yeah>. so, uh, <laughs> that was a new, yeah. that was a new one right yeah. there. Hey, <laughs> quick I, commercial break. I got hold, some, hold on. I got some stats for you, Adam. Talking uh, about stats, bro. Oh, good. Finally, I didn't finally know, bring something for me. It's always Justin in the freaking conspiracy theory. No, topics. this is really cool. Yeah, I don't want to open, feed me. Like I don't want to open this with this because I'm like, Adam's going to talk about this for an hour and a half. So I got to leave this. Oh, wow. Episode. You really think so? It's got to huh? be so business related. I dude. looked up uh, statistics on U.S. millionaires and U.S. billionaires. Okay. Okay. So this is really cool, right? And I love these stats because they fly in the face of the narrative, uh, the popular narrative around millionaires and billionaires. Okay. So here's here's what they are. 88% of U.S. millionaires are self-made. So almost yeah. 9 out of 10 millionaires in America Started out like everybody else and, be- and became millionaires. That's great. Eighty percent of them have college degrees, so the majority of them have higher education. Okay, billionaires. Now, billion is a big deal. There's not very many billionaires in the world. Sixty-two percent of U.S. billionaires are self-made. So what that means is they start out like everyone else. Yeah. Six, a little over six out of ten. Completely self-made, and their education levels. So they're lower. not well, just like you know, handed it from the Rockefellers and from uh, uh, well, the other guys. Check this out, right? Seventy percent, seventy percent of them have college degrees, so a little less have yep. college degrees. Uh-huh. So here's what's interesting. So I said sixty-two percent. Another eighteen percent are a combination of inherited plus they built it themselves. So what does that mean? That means they probably inherited a few million dollars or yeah. twenty million dollars. And then they turned it into billions. Well, now, before somebody watching is like, uh, that's just, no, it is harder yeah. to turn 5 million into a billion than it is to go from zero to a million. Yes. It's okay. People don't realize that. To go from zero to millionaire is far easier. It's only somebody who's never built any, more than a, uh, ever built a business yes, before yeah. or multiple business would think that way. I wish that was like, like you know, how. Uh, there's certain courses like through high school. I, I I would love to see them have a course on just like you have to create your own business. Like everybody has to go through that process. Yeah, It'd be so enlightening. For oh, people. dude, mm. if you gave if you gave a thousand people a hundred million dollars, zero would turn it into a billion. That's how hard it is. Yeah. to it's, become a billionaire. Yeah, very difficult. Only twenty percent of all U.S. billionaires are inherited, and these are people who are like Johnson and Johnson, you know, yeah. kids, and you know the whatever. So the truth is, uh, the, the vast majority of billionaires in the U.S. are self-made or a combination of inherited and self-made, which totally flies in the face of that whole you know a great narrative, uh, right? Yeah. To add to that, I'm actually familiar with all those stats, and they're in uh, the book "A Millionaire Next Door." That's a really good read. Those are actually a book that Mike referred to me like a year oh, or two ago, and I read. I really and I wish, like, <clears throat> it was all a lot of the stuff. It was a lot of things that I had read before. I wish that I had read that book when I was in my 20s. Um, one of the things that I thought was really fascinating that I took from it was like some of the stats that it said about millionaires and billionaires and like the cars they drove and the amount of money they spent oh, and yeah. the amount of what percentage of their income they live off of. Like most most millionaires live off of like 30% of their income. Mm-hmm. How many people you know live off of 30% of their income? And that's the one thing that like all millionaires had in common was the ability to live below their means. Uh, that's how a lot of them got that to that point. Mm-hmm. And a lot of them are not uh, 
somebody who struck it rich. They're just people over time that have built good habits, good behaviors, that's what that have led saved, invested. Pile. Yes, that's what led them to be millionaires. And a lot of them had very basic jobs. They were just smart with their money early on. So really good discipline. The average like price of a car that like a millionaire drives is like lower than somebody who makes like six figures. It's mm -hmm. crazy. So somebody who makes millions of dollars drives like a forty thousand dollar vehicle, whereas the average person who makes like six figures drives like a six figure car. Mm -hmm. Like it's crazy the difference like and that i wish i read that when i was in my 20s because it probably would have changed some of my habits because i early on as a young kid i knew i had those types of goals right i had goals to be a billionaire when i was a kid right so i think if i would have read something like that it would have changed some of my spending behaviors in my early 20s because yeah. i always reflect now as i'm 40 years old like and i i don't regret anything because i had a I had a really fun time in my 20s yeah. but, but you I, learned yeah, and I did learn, but I learned that way. I learned sure, the hard way. Sure. I learned through my own lessons of getting yeah. back up again and stuff like that. Well, but, where are you going to learn otherwise? <clears throat> it, it's, I mean, you have to seek it out yourself. Yeah, I, it, what, I should have read. I should have read more books. Yeah. Like I didn't, I didn't read enough. I mean, the, one of the the single most important things I could have done at an earlier age that I didn't start doing until my mid to late twenties was reading more. If I would have read more, because unfortunately I didn't have great uh, leadership from my parents and that side, you know, as far as business and stuff goes. So, you know, I should have sought out other places. I didn't have a lot of great mentors. I found some mentors within the business I worked. So I got a little bit of like business mentorship, but like with money and finances and investing, like I think I would have been a lot further along today uh, had I been a little bit wiser in my 20s with my money. I had a lot of fun. In yeah, my, in I, my I learned from my parents uh, old school um, skills, which were save. Yeah, you were the opposite of me. But I didn't learn investments because yeah. my family, they mm -hmm. didn't invest because they were poor immigrants. All they knew was don't work hard, money. don't spend your money, don't go into debt. So that's what I did, mm -hmm. right? But I had no idea how to invest. I had no, no idea how to leverage. So what I did is I just saved money. Yep. And had I learned the next step, uh, because as a kid, you know, I was, a, I was 19 years old running gyms, making a lot of money, leaving at home. I could have invested but I just didn't know. I was afraid. I had no idea. No. These are skills that you, they're, they're great skills to learn when you're growing Even up. Even understanding, uh, like <clears throat> one, of the, one of the most common things, because we actually, we talk a little bit about money and investments on the show, right? So I get, especially when I do my Q and A's, I get a lot of, hey, Adam, I'm 20 something years old and I have $10,000 or I have this much, you know, where should I invest it? And my, the most common answer I say back to them, which I, I didn't know this when I was their age either, is invest it back in yourself. You know, I wish I I wish I would have spent money on growing and learning and educating and seeking out mentors. What a great point! Even if I had to pay for, it, like, imagine spending, uh, it, which would sound crazy. They're right? like, you sure I shouldn't buy an NFT? Yeah, yeah. no, totally. Because that's, <laughs> yeah. that's what you're thinking when you're when you're in your 20s and you saved up 10 or 15 grand maybe or whatever like that, which is a good amount of money for a kid in his early 20s or whatever to put away. And you're thinking, okay, I finally saved this money up. Okay, I hear all this stuff with NFTs. You know, people made money in stocks, real estate, all this stuff with that. What should I do with it? And that's really not enough to make big moves in any of those things whatsoever or take those types of risks. And honestly, what will pay you back even more totally. is investing back in yourself. 100%. And education and growing and learning. And it doesn't mean you have to go through a formal route of, oh, go, go into some university and go to a four-year no, degree. No, there's certifications, courses. Oh. You can hire mentors. Yes. Yes, yes. And I, I wish- Or do internships. Yes. This is huge. Huge. Yeah. Internships, people think oh, I should be paid. No, man, go get an internship somewhere where you can learn and you're going to school for free. Yeah. That's the thing. You're not going into debt, but you're literally learning from in the field, in the market, which no college, no school is going to be as effective at teaching you how shit works. I just had this conversation yeah. with my cousin who wants to get into like the real estate side and he's and he was talking about all these different financial moves he wants to make. I said, bro, you've got somebody who is worth, you know, hundred million dollars. He's got somebody connected to him in that real estate interest. Mm -hmm. Like go work for his ass for free. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Go tell him that you want to work for him for oh free. Oh my gosh. That's and invaluable. He, look, he looked at me kind of like sideways, like, Oh, cause I've got this much money. I could go buy this. I could go do this. Like, you don't know anything about that yet. I said, you're, you're wanting, and you got somebody who's way ahead of me in that field. And I'm trying to tell you, like, if I was you, that's what I would go do. I would do that even as me with the money I have and yeah. the investments I have. If I had that guy in my corner who's a like a really close friend of him, who so, so true. I would say, I told him, I would say, go and hang out with him and find somewhere where you can help him yeah. and do it for free because what you'll probably get in return will be 
10 times more valuable than some bullshit paycheck or some bullshit one investment that you're going to make with that money. You direct have education. Yeah. yeah. So no, right in front of you. I wish I understood that. I didn't, I didn't get it back then. And I get that now. And <clears throat> I think that if you're listening right now and you're in your twenties and you've got, you know, a few, few bucks saved like that, you know, instead of thinking of the next stock that's going to turn or, or doing some risky NFT bet. God, I wish they taught something like this in high school. You know what I mean? Like uh -huh. debt, investment, saving, the things that bring you the most value, like you just said. Like you don't learn that. Well, yeah, like kind of come in full circle with the like the DeSantis. We kind of give some criticism, but like he did uh, pass some bill, like in terms of like the education, like before you graduate, I you saw have that. to have like a financial literacy, which I thought was brilliant. I, I, what? I didn't see that. Oh, uh, yeah. So he he <clears throat> passed a bill, I think it was, that says before you graduate, there's a course you have to take in, in their high school in, in Florida where you learn about, I think, loans, debt. Oh. Uh, interest rates. It's um, like a no brainer. I've, we've said this. I mean, I've said this forever. Oh, how like, to pay your taxes. Yeah. Nobody knows how to pay their taxes. Like just the common sense stuff that you're going to go through in life, like yeah. in order to manage your own totally. finances. Yeah. Speaking of saving money and investing, all that stuff. So lots of talk around inflation, right? Especially goods and food exploding in prices. And uh, one of the best ways, and we work with a company called Public Goods. And so what Public Goods is, they have. They're a subscription service, but they offer all these household uh, goods, cleaning you know, products. They, uh, they have dog food. They have certain canned foods and, you know. Soap, shampoo, dishwasher. So, my whole house right. is public goods and, and their thing is it's uh, very little waste. So it's the same packaging. In fact, if you buy something, then, then you can buy refills and like packaging that's far less uh, detrimental to the environment. Also saves money. There's low chemicals. But really- these subscription services are incredible hedges against inflation yeah. mm -hmm. because they eliminate and as a hedge for someone who doesn't know what that means. If you want to protect yourself against the rising costs of food and goods, subscription services are amazing because they have a subscription fee that helps bring up their profit. They also eliminate a lot of middlemen and they produce a lot of their own stuff or they do the packaging themselves. So what that means is with the let with less middlemen, less hands it needs to, you know, if, yeah. if it goes it from closer to cost, closer to cost. So all the subscription services that exist out there, the, these are the ones that will protect you the most with inflation versus going to the grocery store and uh oh, everything went up or whatever. If you belong to a subscription service, you're less likely to spend to, to be uh, your, your prices aren't going to increase as, as much as it would if you went to a grocery store. So well, that's part of I the see this company doing really that's well. That's part there. of the reason why inflation is so bad is because because of the entire supply chain. It's not like just a, a single product. It's not like meat is just expensive right. for this one thing. It's that it's got to go through like five different hands. And it's like, yep. oh, yeah. well, gas went up for the drivers. The They're going to drive it here. Yes. Yeah, the farmers are going to pay more for feed. It's like you don't think about those things. And when you, ha you can get a company that can cut out two or three or four of those steps, it's massive and they don't they won't when even though they get they'll get hit by inflation too everybody will feel it somewhat they'll feel it less than somebody who has to deal with all yes that. because they have more to work with and they're motivated to not yeah. change certain things or whatever because that's their that's what they're all about yeah. so yeah if you want to save money now's the time to look at subscription services it's a great and public goods again they cover so many things well speaking of saving money isn't mind pump store doing a discount right now oh you know what i was going to ask you i was going <laughs> right to bring something up say, right before we say right before we tell the audience yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. we tell the audience we so we so treat the uh, none of by the way too okay i think we should make because we haven't talked about this in a long time uh we have mindpumpstore.com which sells. we have merch you guys yeah we have merch yeah. we have uh, new gym equipment all home kinds, gym equipment all kinds of stuff on that now f for the audience they need to know that we, we st when we started this podcast it was something that we like I did not want to do anything on that side. I just, I think the margins are terrible. It's a headache side of the business. Uh, it's just, it's not even fun yeah, to do it. Full transparency. Yeah. yeah, it's just full transparency, right? I'm and just so not current with trends. We have yeah. it. So it's, the, and it's always there. And we have lots of cool stuff in there, but we don't talk about it on the show. We don't push. So our it. staff is always like, you guys bring it up today. So, so Jerry comes walking in and asks us if the, the response back was, well, you guys are going to pay us our commercial rate for that. <laughs> it's our store. <laughs> I know. Hey, so along those lines, so the sale is we sell home gym equipment. So like, you know, like, um, uh, what are they? Suspension trainers, for example. Yeah. Ab uh, roller, the ab rubber roll, bands. Yeah, bands, that kind of stuff. Dynamometers, so, yeah. so you guys do that grip testing. Yeah, so we have that kind of stuff there, and that's all 20% off right now. But along those lines, <clears throat> did you guys see the statistics? That Did I send you guys the statistics on 
the percentage of people that are still not going back to gyms. Oh no. Okay, so what is that number at? It's it's nineteen uh, percent lower than what it was pre pandemic. So it went up after you know the pandemic ended, but it's sticking. Damn, I wish about- we remember. I wish. I wish we had the resources. Uh, I don't want to exhaust poor Andrew over there. It'd be interesting to hear what we all predicted before. I don't remember what when we were. Do you remember what we predicted? Well, well we said remember. it would be. We, we said it would be dip, permanent stuff. No, but. we did. I th- and I th- we had a little debate on how permanent it was. And right. I think I was more like I think most people, more people, will I come wanted back. it to come back roaring, but yeah. I just yeah. You know what? I wish I, I remember what we tough. all. I, I posted it. Let me see if I can find it because I actually have the numbers. Uh, most likely, I was right. You were probably was, off. Yeah, that'll be the first. Uh, yeah. <laughs> All right, so here it is. So, um, so sporting equipment sales. So people buying home equipment and stuff like that obviously exploded after the pandemic. Came back down, but it's still about fifteen percent above trend. So still above trend. Then the people going back to gyms he, took a huge. First off, they lost a lot of members after the yeah. pandemic. Came up quite a bit, but now it's staying steady at nineteen percent below trend. Now, and that that's reminding me because obviously we have the Mind Pump store with the home gym equipment and we do sell more than we have before. I think that's part of it. But here's what else is interesting. We have friends in the gym business, yeah. gyms that were able to weather the storm and they're crushing right now. So what I think that happened, even though there's less people going back well, to there's gyms. there's less gyms. Right? Way less gyms. So it's like you only have so much to, to fill those gyms up. Yep. Right? So many opportunities. If you survived the <coughs> pandemic and you're a gym, yeah, your we predict crush. that. Yes. Now, so, now is a good yeah. time for you because yeah, yeah. you we, have we way pred- less If you made it through that, you had a good business model. You had a good enough business mm-hmm. model to make it weather that storm. You were going to reap the benefits on the backside because we knew that it would flush out. And I forget we went over the percentage, but it was a lot of gyms. Well, I could see why that stalled because of, uh, I guess, inventory, right? Like, there's only a certain amount of gyms that made it. But let's say, like, you know, a few years from now, that business kind of grows again, more gyms open up. Yeah. If we don't get shut down again. Now, I don't think we've seen the end or the final numbers of no. this either, though, because we, you're still hearing right now. I, I thought I heard just the other day they're trying to freak everybody out that in the summer, another, you know, variant of the COVID's God. coming, right? So that there, there's still people that are they're fear mongering, and then on top of that, you still have some gyms too that still make you wear the mask inside the gym. So I've still seen, I still Where? seen, uh, you, I hear Bay Area, really, yeah, really? yeah, yeah. yeah. Seen it well, that or, or just randomly, I've seen people posting their videos of working out. I see people low- now. It's, it's not required where I go, but I still see people wearing masks. So that's that's what I don't know because I haven't been in one of myself. Yeah. So I don't know. But it's it was odd. I saw a video of like five people, everybody in the video all had masks on inside the gym working out and it's here in the Bay Area. So I'm assuming mm. that some of these gyms are because it's at their discretion as a private business. Right, they they right. could say, hey, it's still required. Right, right, right. right. Yeah. So <clears throat> I would imagine that. So there's still some people that would like to come back. But they're like, because eh, that, that's how I would feel. The reason why I have no desire to go to a gym right now is because I, I the well, the gym that I think is that I would go to is the one that still is got right. people wearing. Yeah, you should it. check because I don't know if they would do that. But you're, yeah, that would do whatever. I mean, so and then there's some people that are like me in a sense too. They're like, ah, oh, they haven't checked them. Um, I've figured it out to do it on my own at yeah. home or whatever like that. So I'm getting by. Yeah, I kind of miss the gym, but not enough to actually go reactivate my memberships. Or in my case, I'm paying for them anyway. You're, so, yeah, you're still donating to a bunch of gyms, <laughs> yes, aren't you? I am. Yeah. Well, so talking again to my friend who runs a big uh, a cha- uh, chain, I said, so what other differences have you noticed in the trends? And he goes, more people are signing up and working out not to lose weight, but for uh, mental health. So mm. lots of people are coming back and saying, you know, why, what's your goals? When you sell memberships, one of the first things you ask is, what's your goal? So you know how to Interesting. tailor. And he says, and I never heard that. Did you guys ever hear that? No, no. Sold? That's Nobody not ever said that. Fat loss, build muscle, that's why look, it's, look like a certain way. Yes. People are, are aware of that. Though. They're saying, hey, I want to I want to improve my mental health. I need to move more. I was locked up. You know, my anxiety, yeah. my depression or whatever. So I find that very interesting that people are, are starting to see value. Speaking of anxiety, by the way, um, I made an interesting speculation with blue light blocking glasses. Uh, blue light is stimulatory, right? And if you're already feeling anxious, anything that's stimulatory could potentially make that anxiety feel worse. If you ever feel anxious, try putting on blue light blocking glasses. Mm -hmm. So I did that with the Felix Grays and it does have a calming effect. Mm -hmm. So if you feel lots of anxiety throughout the day or you're going to go to a stressful meeting or whatever, I would speculate that blocking some of these excitatory blue light will probably improve at least the physical 
feelings. Do you know what's time. happening on a chemical level inside your body with that? It's just excitatory. So I know blue light is um, it's it's wakeful, right? Keeps you, that's why you don't want to be exposed to too much blue light before you go to bed. During the day, it's okay because it keeps you up. But if you've ever been anxious, you know anything that is stimulatory, caffeine, loud music, you know, exciting conversation would just heighten that physical sense of anxiety. Right. Yeah. So okay. blue light blocking glasses. Put them on, and I did, and I noticed that it kind of brought me down. It made oh. me feel more calm. So that was my own experience, but I think it makes sense. So hmm. we'll That's see. That's interesting. Start handing them out. Hey, real quick, look, you got to check out one of our partners, LMNT. Okay, so they make electrolyte powder that has the appropriate level of sodium. Most electrolyte powders don't have enough sodium for people who work out hard. Now, why is this a big deal? You get better pumps. You get better muscle contractions. You feel much better. LMNT has the appropriate level of sodium. No artificial sweeteners. And if you go through our link, mindpumppartners.com, and click on LMNT, you can get a free sample pack. So you actually only have to pay for shipping. You get eight packets of LMNT for free. Again, it's mindpumppartners.com, LMNT. Here comes the rest of the show. Our first caller is Logan from Kentucky. Logan, what's happening? How can we help you? Hey, guys. What's going on? Uh, <clears throat> first off, I want to thank you guys for everything that you guys do. I've been listening to you guys for about over a year now and you guys helped me tremendously. You know, you guys helped me lose 30 pounds from December. So thank you for that. Wow. Great. Yeah. But, um, just getting into the question. So a little background, uh, I've been break dancing since 2009. Uh, I, I started in high school, um, and I was competitively doing it on and off, you know, going around the U S going around, we call them jams, going to different jams and competing against other guys and girls. Um, we would be judged into uh, three different guys, um, and we would go round by round, basically a dance battle. And those rounds will last between 30, 30 seconds to a minute long. You know, it's, it's very intense. We're moving in all planes of movement. We're going from really slow, really fast, dancing on the ground, and all of a sudden we're popping up to a head spin, you know. Um, and then just here recently, you know, I've been taking my health and fitness a little bit more seriously um, and like I said in the beginning, like I lost all this weight uh, and I started really focusing on the gym more. And I guess that leads me into my question, given that we're moving the way that we do us break dancers, is weightlifting or resistance training in general hurting my progress? Yeah, it depends how you do it and, and how it's programmed. Mm -hmm. um, by the way, you, I, I'm sure you watched the movie Breaking, 1984. <laughs> oh. <laughs> It's a really old reference. That's a uh, man. That I, I, so break dancing is my, one of my favorite things to see on YouTube. The things that you guys can do with your bodies. Oh, it's it's amazing. But please makes no sense. Please tell me you have like a little iPhone clip or video of yourself doing some stuff. Do you have something? Yeah, you need to yeah. send that. Okay, can you can you please can you email that to my team? Can yeah. you send that to who? Uh, who yeah. Is it Jerry or Info? Jerry, Jerry. Live, live at Mind Pump Media. Live, yeah, send it to live at Mind Pump Media. Yeah, we'll post it on the. And on when the show. we do, when we post the show, we'll publish the show. We'll make sure to, to plug you. Yeah, because that's we'll crazy. We'll make Sal try and do it after. Yeah, yes. I can. Oh, dude, I can well, this it. is actually how we decided uh, the executive positions in the company. Um, yeah, Justin's best, a best crazy. dancer would end up being the CEO, oh. and then so on and so forth. Oh, battle me, bro. That's backwards. Battle me. Yeah. No. Okay. So Logan, let me let's get to your question. Um, will it kill your performance? Depends how you do it. If if you're practicing frequently, right? You're practicing your dance moves and your positions and your sequences. Um, one day a week of strength training is plenty. That's it. You don't want to do more than that because you're probably already training your body like crazy. And what you want to do with the strength training is just maintain your strength. Now, if you go down to one day a week of break dancing and you're doing four days a week of strength training, yeah, you're you're gonna you're gonna hurt yourself. First off, you'll build more muscle. You're not gonna be as in tune with your new body size and you're not practicing your skill as much as before. So it really depends on how it's put together. But one day a week of strength training is probably all you're gonna need. Would you put on performance? Oh yeah, perform yeah. I mean honestly, if he's doing if he's doing uh, practicing break dancing three, four, five days a week it could be even just straight strength training because he's doing so much dynamic movement yeah, with break good, dancing point. Yeah. that he's going to be hitting all all the mobility and stuff kind of in that. Right. But I would add additional mobility movements. Um, the second part of your question that you wrote to us is how do you prepare for all day competition? Do you still want us to answer that for you? Yeah. So I, I think that's where uh, I'm kind of getting a little bit confused, you know, with information. So the the day before and the day of, you know, what, what, do my movements and more importantly, my, what does my diet look like? 
So diet, do not introduce anything new into your diet the day before or two days before. I made this mistake once going into a, a judo tournament. I thought I was going to carb up the day before and I ate a bunch of pancakes, which I never shit eat. all over his opponent. And I had to, <laughs> I mean, I would just, my gut was wasn't messy. good. It was really bad. I still won, uh, but it wasn't, it wasn't good. So don't introduce anything new. Eat like you normally do. I would just add a little bit extra fuel. But you know, the thing with, with when you're manipulating your body is additional water weight or a bloat is going to, it's going to take away from your skill and your technique, right? You want to kind of be light, agile, fast and strong. So I wouldn't change too much, maybe a little extra fuel, uh, leading up to it, maybe a little extra carbohydrates, but not too much more because what you don't want is you don't want to have any bloat or extra mm. four pounds of water weight because that's not going to help you move any better, right? It's going to just going to make you, um, heavier. So I wouldn't overthink it to be quite honest. As far as the training is concerned, I wouldn't do any heavy lifting at, at least four or five days before. So I, I would take at least four or five days off of lifting before the day of the competition and just do mobility movements and practicing your skill lightly leading up to the competition. Cause you don't want to go into it with any soreness or tightness. Yeah. I hear all those, the advice, like I think, um, to, uh, for sure. One time a week is probably plenty for resistance training. I was trying to like think about symmetry only because there's a couple elements in there that are interesting with, isometric contraction with uh, unilateral training and, and multiplanar type of uh, approach. So it'd be like phase two of MAPS performance uh, as well would 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 help to really kind of bolster and reinforce strength in certain positions where, um, you know, you're in the, lat in, in, in the frontal plane, you know, you're in the transverse plane. Um, and just to kind of to strengthen your body awareness and the amount of force you could produce. Uh, but honestly, the skill... This to, to, to Sal's point, it's all the skill is is <laughs> is the high priority. Yeah, well, I mean, and this dude's got great body awareness. I mean, you ain't yeah. doing that shit like right there, bro. The a, proprioceptive uh, ability of high yes, level break yeah. dancers right. is, is and you can tell at the highest peak. He's right? at that level. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I think the advice is 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 that simple. Is you know, maps performance one day a week. That's all you need. And and uh, the goal, if I was training you, would be like. You know, can I slowly get you stronger by increasing weight over time and while also like trying to never get you sore? Yes. Like that that yes. would be the dance I'm playing. I'm like, and that that is Logan, that that is an example of you you absolutely crushing it, right? Mm -hmm. If I can get you over time, right? So over the period slowly. of slowly to slowly get a little bit stronger. And then also your feedback to me is like, dude, Adam, I'm not I don't feel sore. Are you are we pushing like I want to hear that from you? That means I'm like doing my job perfect because for you being sore at all is going to really hinder your your break dancing. So I don't want that at all. I want, and you can. I think people just we always flirt with going uh, uh, beyond where we need to. You just you just need to do just enough to send that signal that the body needs a little bit more muscle, and that would be kind of the dance that we'd be playing. Is no pun intended. Is that hey let's let's try and do this strength training let's try and get a little stronger week over week but just just enough to where you're getting stronger but you're not feeling like you're having to recover for the next two to three days yeah mm -hmm. does that make sense yeah for sure now I guess I already know the answer to this a little dive into my training so Monday Wednesday Friday that's my traditional training so chest arms legs but the first hour I'm just practicing my skills you know I'm going through sets routines uh, dancing. That's just for the first hour. And then the second hour, I move into the resistance training. Do you guys, I'm assuming you guys think I'm doing too much. Then. Yeah, I, I would know. do, I would do the skills training and then one day a week devote it solely to a full body yeah, workout. Full body. That's it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And then I guess it would, it, last, would, it wouldn't hurt, although I don't think it's necessary. It wouldn't hurt to actually do your strength training first on those days since you're only training one day a week and you, but I also don't need maximum output from you i don't need you to like crush the weights so if i wanted to get a little bit more gains in the muscle direction i would probably say hey before instead of doing our practice for an hour of break dancing and then going to lift weights i'd say hey let's lift weights and then go do break dancing afterwards um but b because you're, you'll get more out of your lifting for sure i mean you gotta you gotta factor in that you've 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 somewhat even if you're great you're, you just don't want to trade skill for strength yeah exactly. this is a big mistake athletes sometimes do is they think that more strength is means you're better only if the skill remains the same or improves. If you drop skill 
an increased strength, you're not better at breakdancing, are you? You know, like I'm, I'm pretty, I'm, I saw your video, Doug put it up there. I'm bigger and stronger than you. I can't dance That's like the you. That's adding like mass you. is, is going to be a detriment. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, really it's just about like keeping the body healthy, the joints strong, supported, stable. Uh, that would be the, the highest priority. Totally. For sure. Now, I guess uh, to my last point, back, back to the um, diet question. Now, during like, say I'm at an all day competition, you know, uh, fatigue happens a lot. And I, and I was with guys, uh, a couple of podcasts back. Um, do you got, should I use like electrolytes yeah. throughout the, like water with salt? What, what, what do you guys think? Yeah, I would yeah. go electrolyte Picture water. So element T is obviously the company we work with. We like them the most. Um, so you can put that in your water. You'd also want to eat food throughout the day, small meals, and make sure you have some easily digestible carbohydrates. Yeah, liquid calories would be great. Yeah, here. so like like Gatorade, uh, you know, I know it's full of sugar and all that stuff, but this is where uh, liquid, you know, sugar can kind of be beneficial. Um, I would have small meals in between, so a 200 calorie meal in between your sets or 100, 100 million, you know, calorie meal just to give you the fuel that you need to continue, uh, you know, competing throughout the day because it's a long day, right? It's, it's pretty much all day. Yeah, all, all day from like, one to 10 PM. Yes. Know? Yeah. So you're going to want to eat kind of like, you know, three or four small meals in between your set. N not enough to make you feel like, uh Oh, it's going to affect my dancing, but enough to give you some energy so you can continue performing. Okay, cool. Cool. Um, you know, well, now that you guys gave me that information. So if I cut out the Wednesday, Friday sessions, you know, may maybe that's where my I'm actually practicing my dance. Like, would yep. you guys recommend dance. switching the out? Yep. With mobility, yes, yeah. dance and mobility would be great for that's those it. days. So fall, and that's in already performance. So literally, f follow the mobility days um, in performance on those days now, and then just stick to the one foundational day of training. Totally, for sure. Okay, we'll send, that, we'll send you mass performance if you don't have it. Okay, Logan. Awesome, man. No, I appreciate it. Thank you guys so much. No problem. Yeah, I, I can't stress this enough because we had a lot of athletes that asked this question. We get one do of these not, every week. Do not yeah. trade skill for strength. Because when it comes to athletic performance, skill trumps strength. It just does. Now, when skill is equal, now strength, who if you're stronger, you're gonna do better. But you can't do that, you can't, you don't want to trade the two. So don't take your your current training, your skills training, and trade it no. for strength training and think you're gonna perform Especially better. Especially at that level. Idea. Especially at that level. That's 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 what I'm talking about. Yeah, I mean, right? if, if you're, you're if you're a kid, yeah, if you're a kid and you're new you and you just started something. break dancing last week and we're, some strength in well, it. We yeah. assume you already have a nice foundational layer of strength uh that you've been able to like accumulate this type of skill uh over the years towards. So yeah, now at this point when you're at that high of a level of skill, it's about like keeping you healthy and keeping your joints responding and being able to have longevity in this pursuit. I think Doug used to do this, yeah. <laughs> Doug, was, yeah. yeah. Doug was, uh, he was, he was one of the a, first breakdowns. Like Can you guys a, moonwalk? Yeah. yeah. That's that's always been one Doug of Doug does the whole pop, lo Dude, pop and lock you thing. Wanna, pop okay. and locks. So yeah. we're all from the same generation. I guarantee you all of us went through a stint <laughs> of trying to do Bro, a little I threw, bit of breakdowns. threw a cardboard out and like totally tried and then like did the spinny thing on my butt, but <laughs> never on my head. I didn't even, I, not only did I go through that, but I even had the, um, the, the. You little, had a boom box. No, I had the little lasers. Oh. So, <laughs> no, you did it. So and you, and, and you, and you do, like the you rave do, kids. Yeah, so, yeah. And you, do, you know, you do like your. Break you're good dancing. at a lot of things, but you're a terrible Bro. dancer. <laughs> I can't imagine. Yeah. I can't imagine. This. I can hacky sack. Yeah, I had. Yeah. Hey, I had. Katrina was, says after about six or seven drinks, I get really good. Or maybe it's after she's just she, trying to get you drunk. Maybe after she has six or seven. <laughs> drinks. Yeah, really it looks good. better that's by then. No, we had. That. I had a couple friends that they figured out how to do. What's that move called? Continuation, where they're just you know over and over. Oh, you know the names even. I don't know the names. I did because you guys, I'm a nerd about things, and I remember I was. Like I'm like I'm gonna learn how to do that, and I was like, <laughs> I'm gonna go read. Books ain't gonna it. happen. So I'm not no, gonna figure this you're out. Not gonna learn that easy. Our next caller is Lily from Utah. Lily, how can we help you? Hi. Um. <laughs> so I kind of have an interesting situation going on right now. Um. I work in remote, like a really remote area in Alaska, um, for four months at a time, and so I'm gonna be doing that this summer. And I just kind of want to know if you guys have any suggestions on how to maintain muscle when I'm kind of back in remote Alaska. I don't have any equipment um, and I don't really have like choice in what I get to eat because it's so remote and only accessible by helicopter. <laughs> wow. So whatever the company like provides me is what I get to eat. 
Um, and I'm just kind of wondering if there's an optimal way for me to kind of yeah. maintain. Are you, are you working on the set of Alone? Is that, are you like a <laughs> No. no are you um, a scientist? Yeah. No, so I'm a I'm a hiking guide actually. Okay, okay. So do you have to walk? So, so in remote parts of Alaska, you have to walk around with like uh like a like a side piece, right? And just in case there's grizzlies and stuff. Is that legit? Oh, side, oh, that's your side um, piece. no. So like I actually shotgun. work in Denali National Park. Okay. Um, and you can't have like you could just have bear spray and that's it. So it's a little scary sometimes. Wait, wait, you can just piss them off. Bear, bear spray yeah. for grizzlies? Okay. That's yeah, awesome. it's not um, very effective, but <laughs> it's <laughs> what we have. So that's crazy. All right, workouts. Um, yeah, Maps Anywhere is a great program. It's all basically equipment free, or uh, we could do Map Suspension, where all you need are a suspension trainer. You could hook that up to any doorway, a tree, a any, tree, yeah. and you could do um, <laughs> seriously. You could do all kind. I mean, amazing workouts with that stuff. Would you be able to get yeah. like? It, would you be able to order a suspension trainer and get it delivered to you, or is that a no? So that's the problem um, because it's only accessible by helicopter, um, and weight is like very important, and they kind of prioritize like the guests that come back there and their luggage and stuff like that. I can't really order anything. Um, so last year, what I did was um, we had some resistance bands and then we got like an old um, broomstick, like an old wooden broomstick Perfect. and we put it in between like two trees and we were able to do like pull-ups with that. And then like very, I had like two resistance bands and it was horrible. I just like, I came home and I just felt like I lost like all of my muscle development and it just was not ideal. <laughs> Map, maps anywhere. Maps, maps anywhere. Ma maps anywhere is going to be perfect for you. And just, and just keep in mind too, like, I mean, you are, I mean, if the overall goal is to be healthy and fit and then to maintain as much muscle as you can, when you're back home, you train like a MAPS anabolic type of program, build as much muscle as you can that time. When you head off uh, to Alaska for four months, you follow a body weight type of program. You inevitably will lose probably a little bit of muscle, um, especially if you're hiking a lot and you're not strength training as much as you were before, but very minimal and it'll bounce back. If totally. You, if you stay good, if you stay consistent with the body weight training um, and, and moving around and stay, staying healthy and fit, even if you lose a little bit of muscle, it'll it'll come right back yeah. when you get back. Lily, home. do you have resistance bands with you now? Um, so I actually left them in Alaska last year, so that when I came back, um, they would still be there for me. So I have them. Um, oh, you're and they're just like crappy ones off Amazon, but <laughs> you're set. Maps, I, uh, Lily, maps anywhere. You got it. You have all you need for maps anywhere. That's the perfect yeah, workout. You have the yeah. broomstick and everything. Yeah. So there's ways yeah. you can use. And that. here's the thing: like body weight workouts, a lot of times people lose muscle on them because they don't program them yes, properly. It's the, it, programming. It, the, the programming makes a big difference. And we wrote maps anywhere, so the programming is good. So uh, I, I don't be surprised if you lose zero muscle and might even gain some. Right. That that is very possible. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But I want to just to if you did, it's not that big of a deal because if you if you stick consistently with body weight training you follow anywhere there is a chance that you could see gains there is a chance that you'll yeah. maintain yep. and there is a chance that you could potentially lose some muscle but if even in that case if you do lose a little it'll bounce right back especially if you stick with your train now if you completely take four months off and just you know eat like crazy and you don't you don't do anything like okay yeah. then yeah it would be a little bit more work when you get back but man you stay active and fit and do body weight training for those four months i i think that you're gonna yeah. be you're gonna be great I'm so still do you have like, yeah do you have like a magic eight ball that tells you what kind of food they're gonna drop for you yeah like, or do you, you, so the, same? the food situation is definitely not ideal um last year it was mostly just like processed carbs that we were eating um so like for dinner they would it would just be like frozen food that they would like reheat so it'd be like lasagna or like um you must really like, like this hiking guide thing huh <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's, it's super cool you can't just, yeah. um, hey you can't just go outside and telling you how many clients i've had uh that, that had this situation you can't just go outside and yeah. grab a salmon or something like that <laughs> <laughs> no i actually um 
when I take our guests out and it's berry season, I always tell them we have to stop and eat berries because that's like the only fresh fruit that I get back there. And so I like eat all the berries every time I take them out because I'm just so deprived of like nutrition. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Well, no, not good. We're going to send you maps anywhere. Yeah. Okay, Lily, that, that, that's a perfect workout for and you have bands and you said you had a broomstick. You're set. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much. No problem. Thanks for listening from all the way over there, by the yeah. way. Thank you. Yeah, you guys, like, I've been listening to you guys for about three years now. Um, and I just, like, appreciate you and just, like, everything you, like, produce is so authentic. And Thank you. I admire it. Thank you. We appreciate you. Thanks, Lily. Crazy how handsome Justin's gotten in those three years, huh? Handsome. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> <It's> so dramatic. <laughs> so, <laughs> so ugly Did before. I get her to blush, Doug, just a little? Uh, yeah, just a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Lily. <laughs> All right. Thanks, guys. You got it. Dude, she's talking about <laughs> talking about the bear spray with the bear. That reminds me of when I was in I was in Yosemite and I oh, had bear because I'm, I'm I don't I got chased by a bear when I was a kid. Yeah. So I get like I'm scared of him. Scarred for life. I had yeah, yeah, dude. I had a bear spray on me no joke. in Yosemite and I dropped it. I told you guys this and it punctured oh, and it sprayed, sprayed everybody else. It sprayed <laughs> and my dad being like you know my dad's you know old school Sicilian so he's very much like he covered it with the newspaper. Keep walking, you know. So we just keep walking. But there was a cloud of, of pepper spray that got blown across the street. <laughs> and I see people are like, oh. They have no idea what hit them. And they're like, what's happening? <laughs> they're, so, oh. you know, they're like washing their faces. And my dad's like, keep going. Just keep, keep going. walking. Keep yeah, walking. Dude, so. I was like, oh, my God. But yeah, that's, it just reminded me of that. No, I mean, look, you know, a lot of people think body weight training means you lose muscle. Now, in extreme cases, you're an extreme bodybuilder, power lifter. That might be the case. But for most people, it's just got to be programmed right. That's all. And most people don't know how to program body weight extra uh, yeah. workouts. They do like push ups, pull ups, you know, body weight squats. They don't know how to put them together. Yeah, they don't it's a lot pretty of exercises. random. Yeah, yeah we put totally. a lot of she's all, she also wrote in that she's been training consistently for three years now, so she's yeah. got a pretty good base and all that and, muscle memory. You you yeah. said it. If she loses a little bit of muscle, it'll come right back. Yeah. So I and especially if you're following anywhere on there, because let, let's assume let's let's look at the worst case scenario. Worst case scenario, she's not hitting her nutrition targets so she's she's not getting enough so even if she's sending following anywhere like to a t she and be and still sending a muscle building signal if she's not giving it the proper nutrients to to build or maintain uh there's a very good chance she could lose but i mean with the consistency of training like that yep. and making attempt to stay healthy and fit when she gets back it'll bounce totally back. next caller is kevin from illinois kevin what's happening hey guys how are you what's up all right all right. I appreciate you guys having me on. I've been listening to you for, I don't know, about a year now, and I learned something new every day. So nice. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll get right to it. I'll give you a little bit of kind of where I was, where I'm at, and where I'm trying to go. Maybe you guys can direct me in the, uh, down the right path. Um, so I'm 33 years old. Uh, I've been working out for about 17 years, but never really followed any sort of you know, specific plan. Maybe in high school, I saw some uh, decent results, uh, but I kind of just followed the, you know, do eight to 12 reps of everything, sweat a little bit, and I'll be good to go. Um, you know, I recently learned that's not exactly how it works. Um, a little bit deeper into my background, um, about two years ago, I was at a pretty low point in my life, uh, realized that alcohol was, you know, taking over and, uh, you know, destroying my mental health, physical health, you know, everything around me. So, uh, you know, with that, there's a lot of bad eating habits, a lot of bad exercise habits. And I heard from many people, including you guys, you know, that um, resistance training has a ton of mental health benefits, you know, and I was put through the ringer of medications and whatnot. And I finally decided to start getting into lifting you know, with intention and I'm now off all that stuff. Hell, so, you know? wow. Hell yeah, job, bro. Man. Nice work. So, so yeah, it's huge. It, it works. Um, about a year ago as well, you know, I, I kind of started my, you know, lifting or exercise journey with CrossFit, um, you know, cause I thought maybe it'd be good for functional fitness for, you know, my profession. And, you know, I saw weight loss, you know, I was 184 pounds at my heaviest. I'm now down to 161. Um, you know, I had some weight loss. I started, you know, seeing myself in the mirror, like, wow, you know, something's going on here. It's actually, you know, maybe working, but I wasn't noticing any, you know, strength gains really at all. And maybe cardio wise, I was getting a little better, but, um, I was also kind of 
falling into that cortisol junkie like I've heard you guys talk about. You know, crossed it seven days a week. You know, I had to do it, you know, to see results. Um, and you guys also taught me that's not the way to go. So, you know, I got into uh, Mike Matthews, Bigger, Laner, Stronger. That's currently what I'm doing. Um, and I have seen quite a big a bit of progress in the strength department. Um, I'm just trying to figure out how to, you know, incorporate some other stuff to work on strength, conditioning, and physique. You know, I'm I'm kind of one of those typical guys that wants it all. You know, I want that power lifter strength. I want the bodybuilder physique and, you know, the athletic conditioning. But I know I can't necessarily have it all. Um, so to lead to my question or questions, two quick questions that kind of relate to each other. So I'm a firefighter paramedic. I work 24 hours on, 48 hours off. We are allowed to work out while we are on shift. However, we do still have to respond to 911 calls. So oftentimes I will, you know, get a warm up going, maybe a couple sets of, we'll say bench press, and then we get a call. And that call could last anywhere from 20 minutes to, you know, an hour plus. So now, you know, I've got my warm up in couple sets, go out on a call, come back maybe an hour later, start where I left off um, and try and continue the workout. And we might get more calls. You never know. Um, So, you know, with that being said, if all the stars align and I do get a complete workout in, you know, 45, 60 minutes, it is then possible that we have a bad night of sleep due to calls. So the main question here is, am I wasting my time while working out on shift um, due to being interrupted throughout the workout and or losing sleep, you know, that quality rest to recover. Okay. So this is, this is great, Kevin. Sounds like you've been listening to us for over a year now. You've learned all kinds of things from us. We've changed your life. And then you bought a program and from then somebody you didn't else. Buy a program. <laughs> <laughs> what the oh, fuck, I, guy? What the fuck, guy? Sorry, guys? <laughs> I know, I know. It's all right. It's all Luck, right. Luckily, yeah. it's Mike Matthews and a good friend of ours yeah. who's pretty damn good at what he does too. Yeah. I'm just busting your balls. You know, Ke- Kevin. Uh, one thing before I answer your question, because there's a few things in there that I, I want to address. But before I do, I want you to pay attention to your uh, the the addictive qualities of exercise and keep that in check, okay? Because Going to CrossFit makes a lot of sense when you ended one you know form of addiction, moved to exercise. CrossFit's very, it fits into that category of overtraining, you know, overapplication. You know, you said cortisol junkie. It's that's a it's a great it feeds the itch. Yeah, so so pay attention to that. Keep that in check with exercise. So all right, let me answer your question with your workout. I'm gonna tell you something really cool. Working out where you do a few sets, take a break for an hour, thirty minutes, do another few sets, take a break for another hour, thirty minute, whatever, and do. A, that's an amazing way to work out. That is a phenomenal way to build lots of strength and muscle. Most people don't do it because it takes all day, but the fact that you're working a shift and you have that availability, take your whole workout and just chip away at it throughout the day. Make sure to eat in between and take your time when you you know with what you're doing. It not only is it not going to hurt you, but I I would guess you're going to probably see better strength gains than if you did all your workout all at once. So that's right. actually not a bad thing at all. As far as sleep is concerned, you're going to have to consider how you feel when you go into the day that you're going to work out, right? So if you had a crappy night of sleep the night before and you're going into another day and you're like, oh, I feel really tired and I don't know if I should be working out, I probably wouldn't or I'd go really light and just kind of go through the motion. But that's how you're going to have to judge it. Don't judge it by what's going to happen tonight because you don't necessarily know. Do it like the following day. Like, okay, I feel crappy today. I think I'll skip today or I'll go really easy, like 30% intensity, just go through the motion just so I can move and feel okay throughout the day. That's how you should judge uh, the sleep thing. And then when you do get the time to get sleep, prioritize it. You know, wear your blue light blocking glasses an hour before, make sure that it's a, it's a good setup, that you're going down, you're sleeping, you're not eating, you know, a couple hours before bed. So you can really capitalize on when you do get sleep. Did you, Kevin? Did you listen to the uh, first responder episode we did? I don't know if I have. Oh, you would know. We did one actually for you. 
So there, if you go and uh, YouTube or even Google search, I think it's first responders, Doug. Well, if he does mind pump first responders, uh, that should pop up, right? <clears throat> yeah. If you go to mindpumppodcast.com and search it, I'm going to see if I can get it right now. Thanks, yeah, Doug. I've looked it up before and I think all I had to do was go to just Google and go mind pump and first responders yeah. and it'll, it'll pop up. But yeah, it, for Sal hit everything. So there's not much for me to contribute uh, to that. But if you wanted even more in depth, uh, we went a whole hour, hour and a half conversation uh, specifically to first responders and all the different challenges that you guys deal with everything from mobility to rest to training frequency, everything. So if you if you want even further information, definitely listen to that. 1487. Uh, 1487. Episode 14 everything. Now, Kevin, uh, bigger, leaner, stronger, great workout. Mike Matthews knows his stuff. Uh, but yeah. I'll, 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 I'm going to send you maps and a bullet because I think it's uh, it's it's better. So <laughs> <laughs> Superior. Uh, wow. I appreciate it. Yeah, very much. Thank you. No problem. Yeah. And then again, if you got to break the work, that's okay. So you take the whole workout of MAPS Anabolic, break it up so you're chipping away at it throughout the day. Um, and, you know, of course, make sure to eat, you know, don't skip meals and all that kind of stuff. You're going to do great. I mean, that's a, that's a phenomenal way to build strength really fast. It's really interesting. I've done it it's on It's deceiving how, how awesome it is. Yes. Because you don't... It's just so inconvenient for people. You but. just don't get this crazy sweat or maybe as much of a pump or a burn as you do when you do everything in the hour, hour and a half. Um, so it's deceiving on how well it works. But if you do that consistently... Um, and I've done this before where I... Since I've got a gym at home and now we mm -hmm. have one here, I've played around with this where I'm breaking up my workouts sometimes into two, three, sometimes That's even four little days. mini workouts. Yeah. Um, and I, I actually really like it. Yep. Wow. Okay. I was not expecting that, but that's good news. Yeah. Cool. All right, Kevin, we'll send you maps anabolic. Okay. And, and, uh, congratulations on, on being sober. That's a, that's incredible. Yeah, man. I appreciate that very much guys. Thank you. You got it, brother. All right. It's gotta be one of the most challenging type jobs those shift work for or, sure yeah any night shift especially yeah because just the shift alone or the changing of the hours alone is detrimental to uh, to long-term health so it's like you got to counter that and then you're dealing with bad sleep and changes in diets um so it's yeah. a really hard thing to manage so i'm glad you referred to well, that episode because we talked about all yeah, that. yeah that's why the the advice is challenging because it's like i mean you're kind of just putting band-aids everywhere because it's not really ideal for health in general right. and it's like you can't tell somebody to quit their job but uh you know here's what you need to consider to maintain you know some semblance of energy and health well training training is another stress on the body and people like this have got Already more more than the average person Right. That doesn't mean that somebody who doesn't have this job couldn't to potentially have more stress than this person. Of course, that exists, too. But right away, when I get a client that has a job like this or swing shift or like the ER nurses, things like that, like that for sure, I know that they're already carrying more stress than my average person has to. And so you have to modify and, and accommodate the workouts yeah. to complement that and not like be working against your body and having to, you know, try and overcome all these different stressors. But I will say, you know, if you're, if you're watching this and you have uh, access to like a home gym and you want to experiment with this all day workout, thing, you've been touting that for a few years now. It's really it's, crazy. Yeah, I, I mean, it, it's really, I mean, you don't train at a super high intensity. You want to keep it kind of moderate high, but literally I would do like five sets every other hour starting at 9 a.m. And I would have time for food and stuff. And it's really weird how the CNS yeah. starts to adapt. You get stronger as the day goes on. Then you the next get day, better at the lifts. Uh, the more it's crazy. And the yeah. day the day after, you did so much falling, you don't feel like you beat yourself up. You have it's to be really careful. Hard. I've actually gotten really sore from training this way, thinking I wouldn't get that sore. It's the, yeah, the total volume. volume. Yeah, it's because crazy. you think that you don't ever get that real sweat or pump, like I was saying. So you kind of think like, oh, that was nothing. And then yeah. you get the rest. Well, because you get for, a recovery the whole time. Yeah. So then when you come back to the second 20 minute workout, you feel so refreshed. But then you add up the volume. Yeah. Like, oh. Then you add it all up. And you're like, oh shit, I literally just did like two workouts built yeah, into one. 40 sets. For yeah. Then you, a lot. then you feel it. So yeah, be careful. It's but because it is so effective. You'd be surprised on how little of effort it will feel putting towards it to have a great workout. Our next caller is Scott from New Jersey. Scott, what's happening? How can great I help Scott. you? Scott. <laughs> hey guys, how you going? How's it going? Uh, thanks for having uh, my question. I really appreciate it. You got it. Um, so currently I'm in uh, phase two of MAPS OCR and um, the workout's going great, but I want to make sure that my that I'm hitting the right amount of calories. And so my question for you is I went online and I used a, um, a BMR calculator uh, to figure out where I should start. 
And um, I kind of came up with a number of like 2,200 calories. And um, so I tracked those on an app, but I also use my watch to track all my activity levels. And that always, by the end of the day, could, depending on what exercises I do, could add on like 900, 800 more calories. So my question is, what calories do I eat? Do I eat the calories, the 2,200, or do I take into account all the activities I'm doing yeah. and to make sure that I'm like maintaining my muscle or even, even building muscle. This is the drawback of all these tools right here Yeah, is what happens to somebody who's, who's trying to, you know, do this for the first time. And they've, they've got referred to try, you know, put your food in here and then get this calorie counter here and, you know, or go check out this BMR thing online. Like the, the best way to do this is for to carve out a week or two of you consistently eating X amount of calories. And you can use these tools to give you a starting point mm -hmm. on where maybe you're going to do this X amount of calories, but you're really, you're not, don't hang on what they're telling you. Pay more attention to, Hey, I've consistently eaten 2,400 calories for this last week while I'm doing these consistent activities and pay attention to how you feel, pay attention to what's going on with your weight. Are you dramatically dropping weight? Are you maintaining weight? Are you gaining weight? And then adjust your calories based off of that and not what these tools are saying, because that's right. where you, they're, they're great for, for feedback or a, another way for you to just like the scale, same thing. Like this is where the scale can be amazing or can be a pain in the ass. If you, if you allow the scale, like, because our goal, let's say was weight loss. And then the next day you get on the scale and it went up one pound, that doesn't necessarily mean you were doing anything wrong. You could have easily took in a little extra sodium, drank two glasses more of water and had 30 more carbs in that day. And that could make the difference one pound on your scale up yet you're programming right. your diet and everything is perfect. So the same thing works with these tools is, you know, just because your, your your thing says that you burn 3,000 more calories than what you're eating, it doesn't necessarily need you the next day, you need to bump up a bunch of calories because you're way too low. Pay attention and see what how your body moves. Use these tools as just kind of feedback for you to kind of figure it out yourself, if that if that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, welcome. Yeah. W welcome to the mysterious world of uh, of metabolism. It's it's actually yeah. one of the most complex things that we've observed, and it changes and it adapts and it moves. So what Adam said is one hundred percent accurate. There's no precise way of really figuring out how many calories you burned. I mean, there's some really expensive testing that you could do. It'd be super inconvenient, and and it wouldn't make any sense. You'd have right. to have access to very expensive equipment and it would be ridiculous. But so it really, it's just watch the scale, watch how you feel. Am I going up in weight? Am I going down in weight? Do I have energy and strength? Do I feel good? That's the best gauge. There really isn't these, these things are starting points, but. Right. The weird part about it is if I didn't have any way to track it or, or track my activities and I was just trying to eat like say the 2,200 calories, the reason what was throwing me was like, how do I know I'm still in a calorie surplus or if I'm in a deficit? Gaining you, or losing weight. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's it. And you, and, you, and you won't know based off the tools. You'll know off of being consistent with eating right. a certain way and consistent with your training yeah. and then allowing that data, that feedback, i.e. the scale, strength, energy to give you feedback on, okay, am I too high of calories? Am I too low of calories? Am I in a sweet spot? And honestly, for someone like you, I, I really, I want you to be in that sweet spot. If I really don't want to see the scale go up much, I don't want to see the scale go down much. I want you to feel good. So I'm looking for a calorie range there where you feel like your performance is good. You're not seeing the, the way. And by the way, up or down one or two pounds is no. Not, don't don't look at the yeah. daily fluctuations. Yeah, look, look at it yeah. per week. Yeah, and, and and use body fat tests if you want to get even more specific. Oh, if you have access to yeah, that. so you could test your body fat on a weekly basis. Look at your weight on a weekly basis. Then you can look at lean body mass versus fat mass and then mm -hmm. you have all the information you need to know if you're in a surplus or a deficit. Yeah, what do you right. say? Is it you, Adam, who, um, you, your beginner client that's coming in uh, is usually two to two weeks to like yeah. a month of just like tracking yeah. all the food intake and then uh, for the most part, like the weight fluctuations with that, like it takes at least that amount of time to just get some semblance of like what's going on in terms of a maintenance uh, right. caloric amount. That And that's the to me... The, I'm sorry. The, the funny part about it was that since I started listening to you guys and it, and it seemed like, you know what? I think um, a lot of times you guys are talking about eating more calories 
to bump up your metabolism. And I know I've always, it's, it's been hard for me to even eat 2000 calories. So this is like, I'm really pushing myself. Um, but the thing that was uh, interesting, I was 178 and I started, started eating a lot of calories and my weight started coming down. I'm, <laughs> Well, That's, you know, here, here's something else. You've started that. building muscle probably. Yeah, That's and, what. <laughs> and your metabolism will look at, here's the deal. Here, this is interesting now. If you increase your calories, this is for most people, just an increase in calories will cause the metabolism to speed up a little bit. Cutting calories will cause it to slow down a little bit. Okay. And this effect varies depending on the person and how long the surplus or deficit is happening. Like mm -hmm. there's a range of calories that your current lean body mass will burn on one end is less efficient on the other end is more efficient and the things that determine efficiency have to do with hormones and sleep and if you're building muscle or not building muscle and strength and all that stuff so just go i would go week by week look at the scale and if you have access to a body fat percentage test take yeah. that on a weekly basis same day same time make sure it's very consistent and then calculate fat mass lean mass What's going on? Am I going up or am I going down? And then that'll tell you right there. And if you're going up, you're eating more than you're burning. If you're going down, you're eating less than you're burning. That's the bottom line. No matter what that number is, it's telling you if you're eating more or less than you're burning. Right. So I have access to like um, a scale that you stand on to do your uh, percent body fat. And I also have the one that you can hold in your hands. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I always get different numbers between the two. Yeah. Whatever yeah. you use. So that's electronic yeah. impedance. It's one of the most, it's one of the least yeah. accurate and, and easiest yeah. to get to fluctuate. So pick one, stick to that one, do it the same time, yeah. the same day, and make sure you, you, you have the same amount of water and food it's in your food, system. Yeah. Yeah. Make Everything everything as consistent similar. as possible. So that, that, that reading will give you, yeah. you know, it'll, it'll tell you the trend up per or down. Perf preferably the, you know, in the morning on the yeah. same day of the week. So every Friday, first thing in the morning before you do Free anything. Yeah. yeah. Naked or just first thing. That's what you got to do. And that, that'll give you, and again, whether it says, 60% body fat or 6% body fat matters less to me. It's that that's the starting point. Let's adjust your diet to what we think you should be at and then monitoring it week over week. Is it going up or down percentage or maintaining is how I'm going to adjust. I do not want to get caught up on the actual percentage that it says and worry about how yeah. it could be conflicting with another tool. It's like they're all they're all great tools. They really are, but they can get overcomplicated when we we hang on the 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 data that it's feeding us and it's like you know we're better off getting an idea from just tracking ourselves and figuring out where like what Justin was alluding to. That's how I start everybody is I use all these tools. I love them. But before we even introduce them, I actually want them to figure out, uh, you know, their way long form, right? Or whatever you want to say, however you want to say that, for lack of a better word, of just figuring out yourself by tracking mm -hmm. uh, where your metabolism currently is. And that just takes a little bit of time, Are first couple weeks. Tracking steps too with like a uh, pedometer or a Fitbit or anything like that? Yeah, I, I use a Garmin watch. Okay. Okay. Yeah. But no, I mean, everything just we said, data. that's pretty much it. it. It just track it on a weekly basis. And watch the trends. Don't get don't get caught up so much on the number, but look at the trends. Is it up or down? Right. So I'll just um, just use one number for my calories and ignore the extra calories added back in from activities. Yeah. 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 And then based on if you go up or down in body fat and weight and that, then you'll know if you need to add or drop calories. All right. All right. That right sounds Scott. awesome. Thank you. Right on, Scott. All right. Thank you very much, guys. No problem. Thank you. Right. Yeah. It's really that's the only way to do it. Is to is to track that way because there's nothing is going to be precise or exact. Such individual variances. All yeah, and, and, and it changes on it could change on a daily basis. Yeah, and they're all these are all different tools. So yeah. they're you know they're all giving him different feedback, and it can get really confusing if you if you hang on. Yeah, you know precisely totally what it numbers. says versus kind of taking all that data and getting like a, an, an idea right of like okay, well this says that I was probably too low a calories this week. Oh, and my body fat percentage actually went up because I'm, so I'm probably losing muscle. So, okay, let me increase like protein, a little bit of calorie. So you use it like that as, as a, as a general way to give you an idea if I'm heading in the right direction, getting caught up on the, you know, and this, I mean, you know, I, I used to have a lot of, a, a lot of challenges with like my engineer clients. Mm -hmm. who were like oh, so they yeah. want like, live and die by the numbers yeah so. they live and die by the numbers and they want to be like and i'd always have to tell them like ah, it's not we can't do that because of what you brought yeah. up with the metabolism the metabolism is so complex that it literally can change week to week it's yeah. up it and auto down. adjusts all the time yeah, yeah and 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 not only that like let's say we figure out exactly where your metabolism and then like 
And, you, and you just stick to that number for three weeks. Well, it's and different. Then, and then, and then uh, you have t poor sleep for three days yeah. in a row, yeah. like changes, you know? So there's, you, 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 ha you can't really get too hung up on these, these tools and, 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 you know, marry the data that they're giving you. They're, they're great to have. I'm, I don't like, I, I like them. I like having them, but this is where it becomes a problem when you hang on it like that. Look, if you like our information, head over to mindpumpfree.com and check out our guides. We have guides that can help you with almost any health or fitness goal. You can also find all of us on social media. So Justin is on Instagram at mindpumpjustin. Adam is on Instagram at mindpumpadam. And you can only find me on Twitter at mindpumpsal.